What's up, banditos? And we're live Sunday, September 4th, little after 7.30 p.m. from the Pacific Northwest. And I got a question for you. Are you drinking the Kool-Aid? Are you a build manic? If so, this stream is for you. We got some therapy headed your way. Let's go. Banditos, happy Sunday, happy almost Monday. <laughs> so we got a good stream coming at you today. We're gonna be talking shop a little bit. We got a lot on the agenda, but big things, big things. Uh, we're gonna break down some build theories and kind of talk about some bigger picture build stuff. So this is um, a conversation stream. So this is that's the topic. The topic is build manix. Are you drinking the Kool Aid? And we'll get into more about what I mean when I say drinking the Kool-Aid. I drink the Kool-Aid. So if you're anything like me, if you feel like we got anything in common, <laughs> then you're probably drinking the Kool-Aid too. But before we get into the topic, uh, I want to let you know, let's, let's just talk about uh, builds here because I am working on this build and this sort of part of it, right? This is sort of part of it. It's a good sort of a segue to it. So I've been running this build basically over the last couple of days as you guys know and you guys have been here helping me because you guys are my boys you're my boys you're my banditos and you've been helping me progress my character so i've been working on this progression it's kind of been on my mind for a while but the events have been kind of getting in the way but uh just just for fun there's no other reason but of getting I, you know i really want to be like basically top 15 ultimately top 10 might be really tough because some um, there's a big big gap here but um you know a top 15 and right now i'm at i think 93 so i'm a 93 and when we started this two days ago i was at 99 so we dropped down that many spaces and just yesterday alone we got over 1100 headshot kills in a single stream thanks to you guys so that was a stream subathon so this is september over on twitch especially so you can really help me grow my twitch account Right now, we are streaming on Twitch, and I would love for you to join me over there as well. We're trying to get things all uh, rocking and rolling before Season 10 drops, which is only a few days away. As you guys know, eight days, nine days, eight and a half days, something like that away. And so I want to make sure that we got the channels all popping, the energy live. And we got over 2,500 followers on Twitch, and so I want to push that number up. And uh, many of you, uh, if you guys are willing to support me in the subs sub side of things which on twitch isn't free right you got to pay to sub on twitch it costs money but in september in september twitch has got a promo right now where they're giving you deep discounts on those subs and the longer you sub the deeper that discount is so really appreciate that if you guys are willing to support me i'd love the help anyways the links uh to my twitch channel are always dropping in the feed and they're also in the uh, description area anyways so you guys really helped me out yesterday because each sub was extending my stream time and that allowed me to get in some more headshots so we got over a thousand headshots yesterday 1100 headshots so that that felt great and and along the way what's going on is we're evolving this build okay now this build is drinking this build is like if you look at it and you see how crazy it is this is sort of what i mean so we're going to segue here into the topic i'm going to walk you through this build but this is sort of what i mean by drinking the fucking kool-aid all right because this build rocks and i bet you there is some old school builders out there or division two players out there that will fucking slam this build right and you'll be like oh you're not running the uh, the memento in the you're not running the vi vindictive vigilance blah 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 you know what i mean and it's just like this build rocks it's got a special purpose it does what it does, it does it's a very special build and that's what I want to talk about. And like, why do we drink the Kool-Aid? <laughs> and who's crazier? Us guys that make these crazy fucking builds, 
that absolutely work and i'll show you why it works and then whatever it, it does what it does you know am i you know am i competing for like the best dps in the game yeah i think so what this build does that's a big debate that's debatable though right and how we classify uh dps yeah this is one shot one kill i'm point blank sniping with the nemesis literally point blank sniping with the nemesis you saw it yesterday you saw it the day before this is crazy shit, right and i'm promoting it <laughs> and that's right kelly's got it right there no foxes no contractors must be trash you're not running the famas you, you you dps you know if if my buddy the let uh if my buddy who does raid speed runs doesn't approve your build then you're fucking trash you know what i mean and it's just like that's and so this is a really important subject it's a really really important subject it's our subject on this channel right it's our subject on this channel not the not to self-promote that's not my point here right but the, the topic is is that we got to purge the community of this absolutism type of thinking right and we see it comes right here in this channel sometimes in chat and whatever and and I, the right way i don't think is for us to attack these people and, and because they're they they could these people come in with their mind already set so if you argue with them all right they love that argument they're looking for that argument that's their only reason why they're commenting they comment like if you don't run blah 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 then you don't have the best you're not you honor you there's no reason to even run this build right it's just like if you if you're not running the ak-47 then there's no reason to run this but your build is you there's no there's no other build out there basically right and they're dropping these comments you know they're the absolutist comments it's black or it's white it's all or it's nothing this is the old school style of game and you gotta ask yourself how are these people still playing the division two and that is the big question of the day that's the topic of today's stream is is that if we continue to go if we if if this is a way of thinking that and it plagues the community the toxicity of this game starts with that question everything the hate the pvp shit all that drama even the racist the fake racism the real racism i don't know what's going on over there but there's all sorts of crazy shit over there right like all of that stuff starts with the build conversation believe it or not it always does it's that's where the egos are coming from right it all come from from my build is better than yours and this is why and then that guy say no your build is not better than mine because my buddy who does uh raid speed runs in under seven minutes will, will tell what doesn't agree with you <laughs> right and it's perspectives it's perspectives right and so there's different perspectives and what your builds are why you're running this build and the number one most important build is a perspective is fun and so when you take the fun out of the game what the fuck is left dude <laughs> you know what i mean like if we're not having fun and playing and being mad scientists and frankensteining some builds and absolutely love that build and what the fuck are we doing here because i'm not gonna fucking I'm not going to commercialize this build and start producing it in a manufacturing uh, establishment and, and selling it on the fucking streets of China. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it's a video game. You know, this build is going to be awesome. And in a couple of months, I'm going to probably move on to a different fucking build because there's going to be new gear and all that other stuff. But you got to ask yourself, like, what are these guys doing in the game that think this way? You know? what are they doing in the game what are they playing with are they really still running to m1a like i heard this guy talking uh today and he was basically saying that the m1a is meta literally saying this this morning the m1a is meta it's been meta since day one and uh if you don't run the m1a you're basically trash <laughs> you know what i mean and it's just like he's literally saying this and it's just like he was talking about it was really funny he was talking about this four types of division two players out there the ones that who don't know anything and then uh which is fine and he's and he like then there's the pvpers and then there's the people that run youtubers builds just because they uh they're 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 uh they're a fanboy of a youtuber the build must be good you know so uh, basically and then then he says basically the only good people in the division two 
are the ones that listen to the le- the uh, the speed runners, the raid speed runners. If you're not listening to the raid speed runners, he's basically calling you the other three types of people in the division two, which is basically which basically he described as as as, as trash in a very angry in a very angry way <laughs> and i was like man this man is so fucking angry i can't believe he's got he's one of those guys that has a youtube channel but doesn't but hates on youtubers you know so like a self-hating youtuber which is really funny right the irony there right but uh and i won't say who he is of course but um self so this uh, the self-hate we'll call him the self-hating youtuber <laughs> is out there he's but it's funny because he's out there promoting this and that's the part that's that's funny basically it's just like if you're not listening if you don't follow and he listed like you know five or six different um uh people that stream that are basically these uh raid speed runners and they say that these guys know everything that you, about the game and what they say is basically fact and if you don't follow them, then uh, if you believe a YouTuber or anybody else over them, you're, you're basically you're trash and you should quit the game. And I think you're you can hear the frustration in his voice like you're an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, wow, it's just wow. And I'm just but the whole time, the, the part that I was what I was really thinking the whole thing. And I see I see these this conversations over an old one. You know, this conversation is an old, old one. It's just like, um, but the conversation the the part that it that that fascinated me about the whole thing and this is a 25 minute voiceover stream is that the whole thing is like well where was the fun because this is a game right this is a <laughs> this is a game and so there's got to be some levity in the in the conversation a little bit don't you guys think am i wrong here i mean that's am i drinking the fucking kool-aid <laughs> And if you agree with me, do you drink the Kool-Aid too? So let me tell you about this build here real quick and we'll get into some of these topics. But, um, and so it's, it's really crazy. That's right. So what you're looking at here is a four skill tier Hunter's Fury build. That's actually playing into the status effect. So this is a status effect DPS build. If that makes sense. Um, and now it's right now it's configured for solo. So it does hit at about 20, 21 million. Um, how well does it play in group? I don't know yet, but we will take it there. Um, and so I'm still fine tuning this and so we're kind of in the final stages as far as the cores go We're pretty set there But I think what I'm gonna be playing with is now the the mods working the mods seeing how much headshot damage I can remove and replace with like maybe skill haste or protection from elites to make it even tankier or who knows God what you know Remove that skill tier put on three skill haste mods uh, Does that make sense? and so uh, We'll see We'll see, but so I'll be playing with it along the way, just small little moves, and I'll just and I'll tell you what I'm doing as I go. But it's a really powerful build. So basically, it's you remember the punch drunk builds that I created. So I created several punch drunk uh, versions. Punch drunk has been a while, around for a while, and so you know if you've been following, if you're following my channel, and if you're a member on the YouTube side, and you know you are because you got that little skull next to your name. But if you're a member on the YouTube side, I create these classified builds, right? And so. Um, but I also create uh, everyday builds for the, the entire community as well. And one of them was the um, the Sucker Punch build that I created several seasons ago. Sucker Punch I created, I don't even know. It was a long time ago, though. It was like the original one. It was like five months ago or something like that. I don't know. And so, but I've realized that the build series is so, there's so many variations to Sucker Punch. And it's so good that I decided to make it a build series. And so I got a few builds that are maintained as a build series, right? And so like a slaughter is maintained as a build series. And so technically we have more than two slaughters out there, but two are officially published. But there's technically three out there. If you guys remember, I did create a, a slaughter one using the fire chem a, way, a ways back. Um, for, and it was actually created for one of these events. So um that one was pretty fun as well so this and so i'm going to be maintaining these over this new season so season 10 is going to drop and i'm going to create another version of hopefully many of these like game over and whatever and it doesn't when a new season drops it doesn't guarantee that i'll be able to upgrade that build but i try right i'll try i'll attempt to and it, might, it may or may not succeed and sometimes what comes out of it is a whole nother build that's an offshoot an offshoot and that's what happened with hitman so hitman i think we went in when hitman was created um, I think it started as a slaughter or a game over build. I think it was a game over build. It started as a game over build, but I realized that if 
it needed its own identity and so i had to break it off from game over because if we just kind of get a, a game uh, a version of game over but it's not uh, better than you know it's going to get outshined by the original game over and so i had to take it a different direction so that had a unique value and so that happens too and that's a great outcome right from this but so this is a this is a comes out of the sucker punch series right and the point of the sucker punch is basically that to give you the power to uh put your your one shot capable weapon to the temple of your enemy and kill them and then chain kill that way going forward right and so it's a shieldless out of cover high power high level survivability so high risk high reward is another way to say it type of play and so if you look here this build is is got one kill capabilities again it reeks it reaches peaks i think our hardest hit was at 28 million but for the most part you're hitting between 19 and 22 million okay and that's when you have everything everything basically procced and mostly that's the chest so you know and we're always and so we're playing uh, hunter's fury but if you okay so that's the damage side of things okay but if you look at the survivability it's crazy so we got we got 20 percent armor on kill coming off of preservation and we're chain killing remember that and we're doing it with headshots so that's 20 percent armor on kill that's constantly being refreshed and then we got 20 percent armor on kill coming from hunter's fury when we're chain killing so we're constantly getting that 20 percent armor on kill and then because we're chain killing that means we're also what getting trophies and we got two blue cores so we're also getting the magic number 20 percent bonus armor so that's 60 percent armor on kill and the point of that is so that we don't need a shield furthermore i'm running four skill tiers and so this starts back from a build we created four or five weeks ago i think div j uh, was part of that conversation many of you were there for that stream it was a high powered uh pistol build using the um the liberty and we brought in the big shield and the riot foam and we were we were hitting them with the riot foam and then shooting them in the head moving on to the next and it was just like wow this is really fun and we created that build and promoted it for those of you that have a hard time landing your headshots because you're holding them still with the riot foam and then you and then the big shield also buys you time so if somebody's shooting at you you can still land that shot um without taking damage right okay so this is the same thing and so we have all of that you're willing to take damage because you got the bonus armor plus the additional 40 percent armor on kill that comes after you acquire that kill right and then you get the power-ups but we got this four skill tier thing happening so this riot foam is crazy so it's not going to show the true power of the riot foam here but we see six ammo nine second and snare duration but we're going to get that 30 percent skill efficiency off of this backpack and then we're gonna every time we pick up a trophy we're gonna get another 15 percent skill efficiency on the fly that's gonna last 15 seconds okay so skill efficiency also includes skill haste so these riot canisters are gonna keep coming back as possible if you if you abuse the riot foam too much so to speak that you can run out and there were times that i did run out right but as long as you're just mindful of it you'll never run out of this riot foam you know and so the build is so powerful and i i got clips for you i'm gonna make a build video out of the final one but in the end remember yesterday we got 1100 and something headshot kills yesterday across the six hour stream but i was point blank sniping with the nemesis that's absolutely insane nobody is doing that nobody's build is point blank sniping with the nemesis out there right now the original build promoted the white death and i was running and gunning with the white death but i decided to move to the 1886 okay to uh make it more accessible to a lot of players because the 1886 is more forgiving than the white death because of the crosshairs close faster you can run and gun with it basically a little bit easier you can put out more shots faster it's got a higher rpm than the white death a little faster reload than the white death you know what i mean so it's not as strong but it does the effing job right it's a one shot one kill thing here so really good weapon and then we're using the nemesis basically the charge up all right now the cost of adding the skill tiers and the blue course is that there's going to be a couple of times throughout like a control point for example where you're not going to kill an enemy in a single shot it's going to take you two shots at worst three shots if it's a super tanky enemy but the riot foam buys you all the time in the world to do that and so uh so the idea of the nemesis is basically to give you a scope for the long shot so it helps you with the long shot of course and it helps you kick off the fight just like how you use the tact 50 so and many many people know that 
that you take the cat attack 50 and you can use it to basically it's a shortcut to proccing your headhunter so the attack 50 is a shortcut to proccing your headhunter and so you could get the buff all the way to 1250 percent in a single shot and then you're one shot and everything from there so that's all it does and so at some point in the stream a couple of days ago that we realized like well what if we took off what if we took off sharpshooter could we still do this without the attack 50 if so if we can uh, there's wow we can get an extra skill tier we could go gunner if you wanted to get another 10 percent armor and kill but we got a lot already but if you put on gunner and get another 10 percent armor and kill you if you wanted to you could put damage on your gun or you could go back to future perfect if you want to you know so we also ran this with future perfect you run close and personal right we decided to go for 20 percent armor and kill so if you want more damage you could go that way you know but you're one shot in everything anyway so it's not really that we realize that well that's not really important right and so this is just more convenient to manage to have the skill tier than than future perfect so that's why i decided to go that way and then the 20 percent armor and kill allows us to play out of cover longer take damage while we're shooting so that's why i went that way but we can go firewall we can run this thing with the shield and get damage to targets uh standing in front of the shield right 12 percent, 13 percent. so but i decided not to do that way because again this is about speed so uh i wanted to to be able to play out of cover and hunter's fury is also applying a status effect so this is what's going you're gonna see here you can see me riot foaming the guy we're gonna kill him with a single shot everybody around him is gonna stagger <laughs> And it's not for very long, right? It's like three, four, five seconds, whatever it is. And so, but you're going to pick off another guy in that time, and then you're going to stagger the group again, and so on and so forth. It's absolutely nuts. So that's why it's a double status effect. It's a layer of status effect. And if you need the right foam again, pop them again. You got six canisters. And so we are clearing out whole control points uh, uh, at the uh, spawn point, right? sometimes not always of course depends on if we get there in time so and all weapons are useful if you need the pistol you switch to it you know what i mean so you'll see you'll see this build play out it's absolutely crazy but this build is the epitome the fucking epitome guys <laughs> of off meta right it's just there's nothing meta about this thing you know i mean it's just nuts you know but it's absolutely a blast and and that's sort of the the fun and it's effective if it's effective right if the build is effective for whatever your content you're doing and you know i, I realize that's gonna vary so like you might play group right if you're playing a group is this effective for group well i don't know yet but can it be effective for group sure just fucking adjust it a little bit you know what i mean just adjust it a little bit so that you know and that's the part where you see that you see that coming in the conversation too oh this build is you know you know uh these youtubers or whatever they don't you know they didn't they didn't tell you that this build is only good for solo or whatever i'm playing fucking solo bro like <laughs> like the, is that not just obvious here that there's i'm playing solo right like you know what i mean like uh, there's so much there to, to, un to unpackage there's so much there to unpackage guys you know what i mean like and we're gonna go through all of it and so we need to make sure as a matter of fact i need to make sure that i pull up my notes because and take notes as we go because there's a this is a big subject i'd like to touch on as many topics as we can throughout the stream because i think we all ha uh, have some sort of opinion to this so um perspectives to add or whatever but um well, let's see what Blake Morris has to say. He says, he says follow up. If these are Kool-Aid themed builds, where would there be a Thunderbird variant focus on the underrated but absolutely amazing practice of cracking open a fresh bottle of Thunderbird wine? Thunderbird? Oh, shit. Did he just bring up Thunderbird wine? That stuff was fucking fantastic. I think it powered up my car. I have a raspy voice because I drank Thunderbird back in the day. <laughs> Kool-Aid and Everclear. Yeah, so here Medic says, I run two YouTubers builds because they work. You know? What are, and, you know, like taking me out of the equation here, right? So, you're just kind of talking about YouTubers in general. Like, 
I mean, I'm aware of what everybody's putting out there and stuff like that for the most part. I mean, I, even if I don't watch the video, I can, I can just kind of tell from the service. I'm like, oh, whether I like the build or not, doesn't matter. They like the build. You might like the build. But are they selling you a new fucking car? You know what I mean? Is this a car dealership that's going on here? And like you take that car home and it turns out to be a fucking lemon and, you know, you invested 20,000. You got a loan with your credit union. You know what I mean? Now you can't afford your mortgage because you got to pay for the <laughs> the the service bill on this thing. I mean, is that what's going on? Is that why you're so disappointed about the YouTubers build? What happened to you to make you so angry? You know what I mean? I mean, I got to say, like, like, you know, th and this, this is the thing, you know, the, the like a YouTuber is probably going to show you the highlights of the build, you know, maybe mention a couple of weak points. So like, look out, don't get shot in the back. But some of that stuff is obvious. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're holding the shield, it's, you, you know, if you get shot in the back, you're probably going to die. But I don't need to hear that. Right. And I don't think new people need to hear that too. I think so. Some of that's left to be like discovered. I'm gonna leave a, I'm gonna leave a little bit of this for you to discover, right? Like because that, that's stuff that you just need to learn to be a good player. Don't get shot in the back. Try to avoid it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's not, you know. So just so just because I guess my point is is like because your favorite YouTuber didn't mention don't get shot in the back doesn't mean the build is crap, does it? You know what I mean? Does it? No, I get it. Like, you know, you can make it like shinier than what it really is. But in the end of the day, what ends up happening, this is probably what ends up happening. Like, if you feel like you keep trying this guy's builds and they keep sucking out on you, like, I mean, you're probably going to stop trying his builds. And, and like, I don't think that's what he wants. Right. That wouldn't be his object objective. So, you know, I would probably put. Oh, what did I, who did I shoot? Um, I, I'd probably give him the benefit of the doubt at first, right? Oops. Knowing that he wants your loyalty. I don't know. Or not. So anyways, I switch over to my rifle, right? So we're not going to have any trophies at first, but we'll get there in a second. But remember, we're picking up 20% uh, armor on kill also after every one of these little shots. That guy, that guy down there is always going to be our pain in the ass. So speaking of weak points, anybody with the fucking helmet. <laughs> but the cool thing about the nemesis is that um, it kind of gives you a little bit of uh, flexibility to pick up that. Headhunter again, I guess is what I want to say, right? Because the, the downside about these heavy guys is that they take your headhunter away because you have to crack their helmet. Like here, I think we cracked his helmet. But this is not a nemesis build, so don't don't get um, God. There's another guy right there. Distracted by that too much. Uh, I'm just starting out with the nemesis because we don't have any stacks. And these guys, there's a uh, an elite resource combo. There's a lot of people out there, I guess I should say. So, but uh, normally I'd be running out there. We will in a sec. And so, like, so anyways, the other thing I wanted to mention is, like, so what happens, like, so there's a status effect, right? So you know that. You see it. And if you got a guy that's a pain in the ass on you, like, he was going to dive out of the way, you know, just hit him with that foam. And then what's really cool is, like, the, uh, the weapons that we have chosen are effective at long and short ranges, so... And I'm exploring the long range side of things, but we should start moving. I didn't look at the map. So we get it. So we're going to get all this new gear, right? And so what I mean, if you're if you're not into. I guess off meta builds, I'm just going to call them off meta builds, but build variety, build whatever. What are you going to do with the new gear, right? It's got skill tier and weapon damage. What do you do with that? 
Do you ignore it? I mean, or do we have to like, do we have to go ask our uh, our rage speedrunners if we're if it's approved before we can use it? How does this work out? I'm confused. I am confused. Oh shit! So watch. So here's an example. So I'm gonna pull out the uh, nemesis and. That's how good, that's what we can be able to do with this build. Right now, a lot of it I'm doing for demonstration, okay? Just so, because what I want you to show you is like how powerful the build is. And so that you can, it's so powerful that you can pull out the nemesis. You got all day. It's the time that I'm demonstrating, right? And uh, the other thing is the speed of kill of the, the rifle is absolutely amazing too. And even if you're taking shots in the back, it's cool. Because as long as you land that kill shot, you're going to be getting your armor back, too. So, and you got the bonus armor and all that other fun stuff, right? And so I think that's what comes to be the most important part will be the... So here, here we go. Nemesis. Close range. 21. So there it is. That's the shot right that I want to show you right there. Point blank sniping the bosses with the nemesis, right? There's just no build that does that. It doesn't look hard. It's not. Does it take a little bit of practice? Probably. And I'll show you. There's a mechanic to it that I'm playing into, and that's that's a whole other thing. But the riot foam um, animation that the enemies have, they always have the same animation, and that's what this build is sort of sort of playing around with. Is that no matter what, when you riot foam a guy, I'll let him come down. Watch. He's gonna he's gonna pull on his leg twice, and then he'll stand still. Here we go. One, two, and then you stand still. You see that? And then that's your kill shot. If you wait for that, you will land your headshot almost 100% of the time, like with the high, high accuracy. Here it is again, another one. Always the same. One, two, and then he stands. You see that? And then he's really still. That's what you're waiting for. You see, when they're bobbing their heads, even me, right? I'm like 93 in the world, as you can see on the Xbox, right? Not bragging, but I'm pretty good at landing those things. And, uh, but I still miss. I will, I will still miss. But when he does that, and then he holds still, that's a guaranteed headshot kill for me. And then if you're landing those guarantees, and you don't always have to wait for that if you don't want to, but see what just happened? If I don't wait, I miss twice. You see that? Because I got impatient. So that's when I put whip out this bad boy. There's another caveat to it, too. Part of that was that he was taking damage from uh, an ally, and then they kind of jiggle. So that can kind of cause a little rift in that steady, that steady headshot. But otherwise, otherwise, we're just point blanking these people. So that's that one time that it takes two shots. So you stand in front of a heavy, for example, right there. It's a good example. Now, you just don't want to abuse your riot foam. So, if you got some one on one situations, just finish them. Because you're going to get your armor on kill. So, you know, you get a trophy. Got your preservation. So, uh, groups obviously are the best time to use that riot foam. Bosses or really annoying targets. And what I, what I mean by really annoying is I mean uh, targets that try to uh, sideways walk on you. I call it the, the walk of death. The death march when they when they walk sideways on you they're trying to get you killed because they know they're going to get you to miss so those guys use a right foam see how he's walking slow and sideways anyways so you'll get into a rhythm you start memorizing that that uh tug tug pulls what i uh, was tug tug shoot is what i call it right and so the tug sh tug tug shoot once you memorize that pattern you won't miss a shot so I think that might have been a headshot miss. I think I hit the body there. So let's test. Yeah, it was. So I'll pull out the nemesis. Take him out. See how I missed the first shot because I hurried. Which is okay. Like I'm okay with hurrying. 
I'm okay with not landing 100% of my shots, but in critical moments, that could be the difference between life and death because you only got five rounds. But so you can see it just puts it. I'm actually thinking about calling this build the cheat code literally because it's insane. <laughs> it's like it's sort of making like you feel it almost feels like you're cheating because you're like playing into a mechanic and. <laughs> and riot foaming them too. It's like a double. Right. And then a nemesis to the face is also basically cheating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's legal. It's a legal move. That hold is not barred. But. So, yeah, right foam, super handy. I don't know what to tell you. So, status effect Hunter's Fury builds are not new. Like, I've seen people run in with, like, you know, like, the Banshee and, um, the, uh, the Banshee Pulse and I think the Banshee SMG, if I remember right. Is that the one that gives you perfect vindictive? But for me, like, I really like these, the one-shot headshot, uh, builds. That's like, you know. good as it gets for me plus i'm trying to get my rank up so uh, you can use the regulus too the reason which would obviously be a beast with this build the reason why i'm not running the regulus is because uh, I don't want to blow people up. I want every headshot kill, right? I want I want them to I won't go for that number. So tug tugs pull and I'm a little bit too high. He's there's an elevation issue here. So he's standing in some sort of goalie. And so this build can work even if you're not uh, as much of an out of cover person. I would probably just change some things like, there we go. Uh, how many skill tiers you had? I'd probably drop the number of skill tiers, but still keep them. Because you're still gonna wanna play in tight and close and personal, you know what I mean? Inside, uh, for the, because the set is gonna make you do it. The set made me do it. So yeah, that's an example. The grudge. Is that what I'm thinking of? Thanks, Grumpy. Yeah, the grudge. The grudge. Grudge. So like, and so, okay, here, so here's one of the topics. Here's, here's a subject uh, within the topic, right? So is that, is, is handling these people. And it's a important conversation because one of the things, you know, I've been talking about with uh, Latina, as you know, is my community manager. Um, and she's everywhere, so you can't avoid her. And she's all knowing too. Just if you didn't figure that out, <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet, she knows everything about everybody. Um, her ears to the ground. So she, um, but we've been talking about, you know, strategies, community strategy stuff for the upcoming season. Cause we kind of like, you know, you got sort of, it's sort of a growing pain thing. You got bit when you get big influxes of, um, uh, new members and we're talking about like discord like so we'll get a big influx in discord when every time a new season drops it's the same uh, new content drops it's the same and then uh, with that comes uh, you know people wanting to join clans and you know and which is really awesome so we got to make sure we have room for them our clans are clean the roster is clean and but also you also get d different types of personalities entering the stream right and they're like how do we what is our policy what is our tolerance right uh what, what what is our definition of toxic you know um and and because you know we we talk about you guys hear me saying like i really want all aspire uh for this 
like Discord or, or Text Nation to be kind of a safe place, you know what I mean? And where we can have uh, different opinions. And so I think like one of the things that I'm trying to figure out how to get into the community and start practicing and trying to get everybody to practice and to buy into basically is the, the, the removing self from the equation, which basically is another way of saying drop your fucking leave your ego at the door checking your ego you know like back in the day like in the southwest like you know cowboys and indians you know those those back in the days where like when you entered the bar they made you check in your weapon or sometimes towns had a no weapon policy so the sheriff would basically greet you at the the city gates and uh he'd make you check your weapon so I, like like that except check your fucking ego not wanted <laughs> egos not wanted because what i was thinking is like basically like if you could take your ego out of it for a second like the same thing could still be accomplished in a conversation it doesn't mean you have to agree with me at all right it's like i'll deliver my perspective you deliver your perspective opinion or fact doesn't matter and uh, i'll digest it and i'll process it and i'll come to my own conclusion independent of my independent of what yours right <laughs> but I don't have to have an ego to deliver my information, you know? I don't. That's, that's a lot of fucking gunfire out there, isn't it? I'm, I'm kind of scared. Kind of scared. Let's pick some of these guys off real quick. A lot going on. We got to get rid of those turrets, right? And so, you know, checking the ego at the door and, you know, and so... But it's going to cap in any, it's going to come anyway. So like, how do you deal with it? Right? Like, how do you deal with it? And so that's, that's because some, there's no changing these, uh, some of these people. And I don't want to put everybody in a box, but you know what you're dealing with, right? Like, I mean, I don't. Like, basically, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm not. I don't care to. I got more important things in my day to argue with you. You know what I mean? And like i don't have to convince you of anything this is me this is me talking this is tux right here like you guys you know what i mean i don't have to convince you of anything if you don't like to build awesome man like you know i'm having fun with it i'm giving you my perspective on it but if you don't like the build then awesome I'll, hopefully i make another one that you do love that's how i look at it but like or is the 1886 better than the virginian Right. That's a big topic that I've been talking about lately. And I and I'm passionate about that one and I'm sad about it. I keep saying like, oh, I really wish the Virginian is as good as it looks, but it fucking sucks. And, and I'll, let me tell you why. And I know a lot of people are probably not going to agree with me on that one because and, and there's nothing wrong with them, but they, they just don't look at it the same way as me. And I'm not saying the way I look at it is right. But for me, it feels right, right? It really does. It feels right. I can say it feels right. I can't imagine. And I literally, and I'm an open-minded guy, I can't imagine anybody not agreeing with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how right it feels. But I don't have to be right. Do you understand the difference? I don't have to be right. I don't have to be right. And with the toxicity or when we deal with these build uh I don't know. What do you guys want to call them? Purists? <laughs> what do, I don't know what we want to call them. The guys that are drinking a different type of Kool-Aid? <laughs> they have to be right. You see them. They'll come on my stream and they'll argue with me on my, on my, on my, in my, um, my chat feed. I'm like, dude, I'm not even talking to you right now. Like, can you not argue with me? Because I got like other people, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't have to be right, right, right now. We're talking about something. It's a conversation, you know, but like, um, and like they have to be right so like what what is your tolerance level with that you know what i mean let me let me um you should be shooting at that right phone and he's not i mean that decoy is out i'm pretty sure that decoy is out right so that's annoying when they don't shoot at it so for me what i hope is and it's sort of my job is and the reapers got it like rule number one don't be a fool it's like my job, I guess, and, it, and this is this is a big discussion here. Like, I'm a little bit different. I get it because my job is to influence, and that's the way I see it. It's all over time. I hope that I influence you, but I I just want to give you enough ammunition for you to make your own decision. Like, it doesn't have to be my my way. <laughs> Do you understand? So even as a, like, I don't even feel like I'm, I'm I want to be an influencer. 
You know what I mean? I just want to arm you. Of course, so that you can have as much fun in this game and that you can feel good about about having fun in this game you know what i mean and then what i so what i'm tr i guess if there is something i'm trying to influence i'm trying to influence uh the community into accepting that right accepting that there's there's room in this game to have fun right and that you don't have to whip out your calculator to do that come on dude i'm really see the, the big ass backpacks that's what i'm talking about that's what I mean by cutting out the bullshit right there. That's what the right phone for. He was going to fuck with me, right? He's got this big old backpack, and for some reason, your gun is better at hitting that backpack than his head, which is right in front of me. Yeah, but Reaper says it. Like, rule number one, don't be a fool. You know, that's the only rule in my Discord. I don't know if you guys knew that. But if you want to be a part of our Discord, that's great. You just got to abide by the rules, and there's only one of them. And that rule is don't be a fool. I do not come to play video games to babysit people you know i don't come to be a video i don't play video games to create a bunch of rules either and i don't get that right and that, there's like some clans some discords have so many rules it's like oh jesus christ where is that damage coming from jesus christ and so you know what i mean and so that's the only rule. like there's so much it's just like we're adults here for the most part i mean most people on our discord are over 18 for sure most people are probably over 40 who knows for sure but like i know that the game demographics are between 33 and 45 and so it's really annoying if you feel like you if you're at a place where you feel like you have to create a bunch of rules you know it's just like everybody's an adult so it's just like can we just not be a fool there's no other rule you know that's the only rule and so what I what, what do I call a fool? Well, yeah, of course everybody's definition is fool, I, but everybody knows when they see is different. Everybody's definition of a fool is different, but everybody knows when they see a fool. Can I get an amen <laughs> to that? Like everybody knows when they see a fool, right? Like grumpy old man, do you know when you see a fool? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Or, or or witness a fool? I mean, obviously you don't see anybody on Discord, but you know what I mean? Like. You're like, oh, this guy, he comes in, he's being a fucking asshole. Maybe he says something uh, racist or he, maybe he's intolerant to different opinions, right? You're like, you're kind of being a fool, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, you're very intolerant. And this is like, if other people have an opinion, you, you get very argumentative very fast. And you say, fuck you guys, you're losers. You know what I mean? Like, I heard about... Um, this raid experience and you were if you're in one of those clans i'd love to hear it because here's a perfect fucking example and so this is one of the great the growing pains that we we will experience here in this very near future okay so somebody requested to join the clans and to join the clans any clan basically one of the tux clans it starts out with a few basic rules right you gotta have a mic you gotta have the expansion you gotta group up sometimes not all not every day but sometimes you know uh, enough to <laughs> for it to make sense to be in the clan right and so and then there's no real in yet there's no other real rules right like you don't have to raid we're not a raid only uh community you know so anyways so this one guy i can't remember which platform i think it might have been playstation so if you guys remember this situation you probably know the story better than i do but i heard it from um from hearsay but this guy comes in and he's got like a massive watch. You know, he, he had this massive watch. But with his watch came a big ego, right? And he's um, basically started jumping down a bunch of people's throats about you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean, basically? And I'm sure this was part of the raid, but I can't remember what, what everybody was playing with this guy. But um, anyways and so he was basically kind of told like hey you know that's not how we rock here you know what i mean we're like a little bit more tolerant and patient with people and uh you know somebody gave him that conversation and he said fuck you losers <laughs> you know what i mean he kind of do he went that he went that he went all the way there and I, I just i butchered the story i did but that's that's literally what i'm talking about right and it had nothing to do with about his watch or whether he was right or wrong. I don't even know what they were arguing about. I can't remember. It wasn't even an argument. He was creating the argument, right? Like, it was mostly, like, his aggressiveness. He came in all aggressive and, like, you know, and, um, 
you know, intolerable, absolutism, you know, that whole stuff, right? Um, it's always the same package. These guys or girls are always packaged up in the same fucking package, aren't they? It's always the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? The watch, it has nothing to do with the watch, everything else. You know what I mean? It's just like, they're always the same. It's always like, they're intolerable of opinions. They're always argumentative. Always. You know what I mean? They have to be right. There's one shot the boss right there. So, they all, they have, the most important thing, they have to be right. They have to. Even at the cost of losing an entire community and reputation, right? So, what I mean by that is like, if you see this guy, if you see him again and you know who it was, like you, you were there, would you, would you want to play with him? <laughs> Absolutely not. You'd be like, I am fucking out of here. You know? God damn it. These rogues and their fucking skills. Let me get up a high, high level here. They might steal my attention, but that's part of it. Like, uh, for some reason in the Division Two, these guys—I uh, I think they're cloning these guys somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, because—and I'm just saying, guys, it could be girls too. But like, they just all have the same characteristics, you know. And you see them. I mean, we recognize them. Like, we have like watch lists. Like, we know them right when they come in. You can see them. You can smell them. Right? It's just like, oh no, here he is. We've seen it again. Here's another one. It's not our first fucking rodeo. We deal with thousands of people. You know what I mean? Like, and for some reason, this type of person in, in the Division 2 is everywhere. And it's always around the same subject. It's always around the same subject. You know? Builds. And the lack of build diversity, basically. Right? That's what comes with it. It's like, these, there's no build diversity with these people. There's no such thing. You know? And so that's some of the questions that I, I have personally for these people, if that's you, is it's like, are you, is there really only five builds for you in this game? So you run into contracting, you cannot break away from your contractor's gloves? Absolutely not. No way. Why would you do that? Right? So there's your one build, contractor's foxes. I mean, there's nothing like, and then you got your uh, Scorpio build, and then you got your tank build, and like, there's, that's it? That's all your loadouts, you know? And if that was the case, how are you still here, right? Oops, wrong gun. How are you still playing this game? How are you not bored? How is this game entertaining for you? Where do you where's the entertainment factor? Oh, this would be a hard shot, because he's a wiggly fucker, right? But I want that fucking head. Now it's hard because I I don't have sharpshooter, so there's a little bit of a stabilization thing. Ah. Yeah, now he's out of sight. Let's see if I can do this. Fast. Only got 30 seconds to land that, right? Oh, he's fucking way out there. I'm gonna lose it. Yep, lost it. Fucker! Okay. Grab home, right? Fine. Too. <laughs> there it is. You can rifle them rogues too. Like you don't want to do that when there's two of them, and it does depend on the skill that they have out at the time, right? But that's kind of a nice one. They got a good skill. So, anyways, so how do we deal with these people? So because you know, like we want to be inclusive, right? And so just it doesn't make these people bad people. They're not bad people. I mean, that guy was. <laughs> he, I mean, he said, fuck you, losers, on his way out the door. Like, who does that, right? And everybody just kind of looked at each other. I mean, I wasn't there, but I can see everybody's face, right? And so, hold on, I'm going to fix this sound delay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, but the, that's that's and that's the debate within our own community. Like, because um, a sure star says, like, if they if their cancer, just cut them off. Right. Like, totally. You know what I mean? Like, 
of course and like i have very little tolerance of it myself like i was like this is a video game i always tell you know people that you know like leaders or when people are encountering a uh, a toxic player player inside the clan i'd be like look one offense you know what i mean you just make the judgment call be like yeah this person that's not gonna change i'm not here to be his therapist and to tell him like dude like you're really aggressive and you're you know you're scaring people away and we're gonna because what ends up happening like if you just leave it alone then you'll lose clan other clan members will go right because that person's a, they are like a bad apple and it spoils the bunch and the spoiling that we're talking about is um <laughs> people will leave because they're like man i i i can't group up because I, if i leave my game open this guy jumps in on me and then he's a pain in my ass so i gotta mark this so we're at 108 194 so we ran two control points um so ran two control points so we probably got a hundred headshots in that time give or take probably a little bit more actually because both of those control points had um convoys but uh let me fast travel here hey, actually give me a quick second guys because i got to um use the restroom real fast like a couple minutes All right, all right, I'm back. So that's, anyways, our topic right now. So we're talking about, do you drink the Kool-Aid? That's the conversation, <laughs> um, right? And what I mean by drinking the Kool-Aid is like, well, I mean, you can swing that to either side of the, of the uh, of the divide the great divide in the community and that great divide is is that we're talking about right is is basically it boils down to build diversity because a half or now i wouldn't say half but there's a good chunk of this community that doesn't believe that in that right and so that's what we're talking about and they tend and what's interesting about it is the ones that are usually don't believe that are also the ones that are uh and i hate to generalize but it just i that's i've been playing this game for a long time and it always seems to be the same type of person to just like they're always like argumentative really aggressive unaccepting of listening to other perspectives and they just they grab onto it they they, they don't like they can't let go and um th that's just really interesting how do you deal with that and how does the game deal with that and does the game want that person any anymore and what i mean by the game like there's an energy right like um we have uh, from the not from the entire community there's a pulse in the community right who's got their hand on that pulse you know and not the devs i could tell you that but i can, but i could also tell you that the devs are trying to bring in a new class of player you know that's why i think we see some of the stuff that we see you know uh in gear and changes to the game and like you know uh like uh a game the game mode the new game mode as an example they want a casual player you know and i'm not so sure somebody who believes in there's only one build and if you if you don't break out your scientific calculator then you're not you don't belong in this game 
<laughs> I don't think that's what the devs want, right? If you believe there's no build diversity, you're saying game over, man. Game over. You know, if you're saying that the only thing is this one build and am I going to have a new holster for it or not? That's the question. Then game over, right? This game was over a long time ago. The funny thing is they never fucking left, but their game was over. Their end game ended. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I know those numbers. I run those numbers. I see those numbers. I've used those builds. You know what I mean? And I still believe that there are better builds than those builds because there's more to just DPS. There's more to just time to kill. There's more to just whatever, right? There's fun and effective. Can a build be fun and effective and be the best build in the game? Can it be both of those things? I think so. But, you know, I drink the fucking Kool-Aid. <laughs> so don't listen to me. <laughs> oh, man. How did... Yeah, okay. I was going to say, how did he not catch that right phone? These backpack guys, huh? Excuse me, but I reload. Thank you. Oh, it's always this fucking guy, man. I'm telling you. So. They always give me this guy for some reason. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to fight that guy. He's a pain in my ass. Those grenades. I mean, we got lucky because he blew himself up, but I try to get to his backpack and he doesn't want to give it up, you know? So, so what I'm saying is like, if, if these, these are unmovable objects, okay? I am, no matter how many streams I do, no matter how many convincing arguments and even by popular vote, right? These are unmovable objects, these people, <laughs> you know? That's the way they're built. It's in their DNA. It, had, it was, they were like that way before the division two. It'd be like that way after the division two. And, you know, so how do we deal with them, right? What do you do with them? What do you do when they enter your clan? Do you argue with them? Are you really going to argue with them? I know Reaper's like, yup, I'm going to fucking argue with that. <laughs> Reaper, you're going to exhaust yourself, brother. You're going to be exhausted. <laughs> Me and Reaper are, are hive minds, so that's why I, I can speak for Reaper, but that's the only person I can do that for. I'll let them finish that fatty. They're good to go with him. We'll take on these these young bucks over here. So so I use the the the, the, um, the nemesis to get my proc back, right? So when I exhaust my proc or when it times out. So that's why I'm doing that. That's why I'm doing that. That's the purpose of the, besides long range shots. And then from there. Oh my God, I couldn't land it though. Oh my God, horrible demonstration. But from there, I just switched to the rifle. And so, like, one of the things I want to, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this, like, out loud because, and, and why uh, I love you guys' uh, opinions on this subject is because, you know, because we want to, because it's something that I want to integrate in our community as, you know, kind of part of our philosophy. It's already there, but I just want to, uh, like, sort of get it down on paper, get some community buy-in on it, on, like... Uh, on what that is and what I mean is like, you know, um, 
like what what is what is our level of tolerance to this level to this toxicity how do we deal with it consistently you know what i mean look at all this rigor shit i should probably go cash that in because optimization station because i'm never gonna get it but that would require me to fast travel And so, but like, and so, but part of what I want to do, like if I could influence anything, what I'm trying to do is kind of build some tolerance around, I think what the game is aiming to do, which is to open people's minds, right? And to have an open mind. And I can't, I can't, I can't change these people, right? I'm, they're unmovable objects, like I said. That's a nice Alps. Um, And I think though, like, I think if I, if there was one thing I could probably influence in this type of person is that I could probably help them come to terms with like games should have some level of fun to them, even if it's a game we all take very seriously, right? Like I take games very seriously. I take legendary very seriously. I take my character's progress very serious, whatever, you know what I mean? I take my DPS serious, my killing power serious, my effectiveness of my build very serious. You know what I mean? Like serious as it gets, but I still have fun. And like, if you, if you take that out of the game for people, because you say their build is shitty and that they, you know, or whatever, like if they don't run it, they have to run the meta or they can't play with you, or I'm going to kick you out of this legendary mission or countdown mode because i don't like your build well you can't raid with me you know uh, whatever whatever that argument is you know um yeah i don't know But so, I, I mean, I think like, uh, you know, that's one thing over time. It's obviously not something that'll happen in one day, but I think over time, that's one thing we can, I think we could probably imagine everybody agreeing with, which is like, hey, there's, yeah, video games should be fun, <laughs> right? You know, and then, I mean, that's just, it's just a simple concept. Uh, it doesn't mean they're gonna agree with build diversity, but at least they got, they got the fun part down. They let people have fun, you know, I don't know. Illuminati syndrome in real life. Uh, I like that. But okay, so there's a bigger community, but I'm talking about our community, especially, you know, I think that that's like, that's within the limits of what we can control, believe it or not, right? And and it's a topic for me right now. And it's a little bit of a hot one because we got season. Again, we got season 10 right around the corner and it comes with a big influx of new people. And different perspectives are really appreciated, right? Like, I don't want every, we don't, we don't want everybody to be thinking alike. That's, you know, that's not going to help us progress, right? We need free spirits, <laughs> whatever. But that's just the thing. I think that a lot of these people that are thinking like, you know, this, this concept that there's no build diversity, I think they, they drank the Kool-Aid. You know, uh, I'm kind of flipping the coin on you a bit, a little bit, but they're the ones that drank the Kool-Aid, didn't they? Because here's a here's a here's what I'm talking about. So, this conversation just came up the other day, and somebody was I think it was Latina asking me about it about some build and. And that, it was a test question on like, how do you test a build? I think Reaper, I was, we were talking about this yesterday, right? Uh, same question. Like, how do you test this build? And I was like, well, the range is, is there, but it's not going to, 
it's going to give you a very limited amount of information. It's a paper target that doesn't move. And so when we're talking about the level question of survivability or even DPS, the reality is, is that uh, accuracy is part of DPS, you know, because if you're not missing shots, what's what's your DPS? If you if you're the DPS of somebody with uh, 80 percent uh, shots on target is going to be better than is somebody with a DPS of of uh 30 percent shots on target right and so the weapon and so the reason why that matters is because that's part of the build right i'm evaluating this build i'm evaluating striker over heartbreaker for instance right well they both have the same level of dps so you know if it i mean not same level of dps i'm sorry Wep <laughs> weapon handling but what about if you're comparing striker with um just throwing some out there uh, ongoing directive ongoing directive doesn't give you any any weapon accuracy so but it gives you weapon reload speed and that's gonna help i guess right so you know the, but my point is is like so we get these these builds where they show you these uh, high dps numbers these high damage numbers but it's in the range and then they pull out their spreadsheet and then you know what i mean and and show you it to you on excel and it's just like and so oh, this is where i'm saying that they drink the kool-aid a lot is like well it's, it's all believed because of because because they whipped out a spreadsheet i think a lot of people buy into that credibility right or because this person speed runs uh, legendary or speedruns uh, raids that oh they they can't be wrong right but what influences whether a build is amazing or not a lot has to do with the skill of the player and so this is what I mean so this was a big I think I opened it when I was explaining it to Latina so I was like so if you go into legendary so I can go into legendary guys and I can make it look like I have a god fucking build and because I can play with three other guys that aren't as good as me they might be great but not but I might beat them by like in my skills I might be twice as great so my build is going to reflect that I'm going to have higher kills and I'm going to have higher damage unless my build is so absolute shit. But we've been proving that over and over again. It's the same point and uh, that Reaper and I were talking about like over weeks, which is um, it's about your team more than anything. Like we were running, we were testing different legendary builds and stuff like this. Right. So he broke his backpack and um we were testing different legendary builds and we were like, we realized that we were getting the same fucking numbers. It didn't matter what the build was. And it was a really good test because Reaper and Ari are, are really close in uh, basically play style. I think we're both pretty aggressive, both pretty smart dudes. We know our checkpoints, blah, blah, blah. We play into our builds. We both play into our builds, right? The capabilities of the build. We know our builds capabilities, um, you know, stuff like that. And so, and so and so what i found was like like that's who you want to play with because then you need an order in order to truly evaluate a build i've come to this conclusion in order to truly evaluate a build you need the competitive nature you need the competitiveness of a second player at least if not a full squad but you need that it needs to be in a competitive format you need to be competing for those kills and so if you're playing with somebody that's not as good as you and i'm um uh in like just just pretend i'm a youtuber because i am so if i if i put up a youtube build and i'm trying to convince you that it is the absolute best build in the game but uh i can make it look and i can i can sell that to you i can sell that to you you know what i mean i can deceive you basically is what i'm saying because i go into legendary and I can not kill enemies. Uh, I can let this stack damage on the same enemy, right? What I mean by stack damage on the same enemy is an enemy that's uh, standing in a heal circle, right? He's got three heal uh, stations. I'll just keep applying damage to him, but not kill him. If I don't kill him at the end of that legendary mission, my damage is going to be absolutely massive. It's going to be fucking massive. I'll go into the billions upon billions. I can do that on a shitty build why because i didn't kill him i didn't kill him all i did is shot the same enemy standing in a pile of heals and by doing that i'm increasing my total damage output for the end of the mission 
this mission summary, right? But the interesting part about that is that people are saying, well, you know, the best test of a build is in group. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's part of it, but that's not all of it. There's so much more to it. If your group sucks, your build is going to look fucking awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is that your skill, the, the, the value of a build is, is all about your fucking skill level. At the end of the day, that's the, the build. And so if you listen, so if you read into that a little bit more, what I'm basically saying again, and you've heard me say this before is builds don't actually matter as much in this game as you think they do. Now the devs do not want you to hear that. So you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is it has to do with your play style, your team synergy and communications and you know, all that other crap. Right. And then, uh, because there's uh, the part that a lot of people don't show when they're evaluating the bills is the competitiveness. You don't know that variable. That's a major fucking variable. It's a major variable, but uh, I've come to that conclusion and that realization because I play with some really good dudes. You know what I mean? That are really good at this game. Equivalents, I'll call it. And and we our numbers. I mean, we'll switch the builds out. I'll put on glass cannon. Reaper doesn't run glass cannon, for example. I'll put on glass cannon. He doesn't. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I think he'll put on another strong build. And at the end of the day, it's just like our numbers. I mean, I'll win by a little bit. He'll win by a little bit. They just teeter-totter back and forth. It just comes down to how well did you play that control, that one checkpoint, that one checkpoint. You played that one checkpoint better than I did. I played that one checkpoint better than you did. At the end of the, at the, end of the game, at the end of this legendary, we got the same fucking numbers in two completely different builds, you know? Two completely different builds with the same numbers, right? And so it comes down to like, wow, it's really, it really is play style. It really is your skills more than it is the build, right? And that's not a little thing, you know? And so it's, it, that's not a little thing, you know? That's a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, if you, I guess, basically bake that in, that concept into every build, I think how we present our builds would be very different. I think that if you believe, if you could believe that, if you could believe that, then fun builds, running a build that's just fun to use be, is, will become more of a accepted concept around the whole community, right? So, well, here's an example. Hunter's Fury is often described as the one of the best builds in the game. Would you agree? Hunter's Fury. You know what I mean? Often the best build in the game, right? And so, I mean, I'll, I'll give it to you. The, the speedrunners are using it. Legendary speedrunners are using it. Um, I mean, I don't know what raid speedrunners do. I don't pay attention to them. But legendary speedrunners do use it a solo and in group. Right? Hunter's Fury. It's used in heroic content. It's used eh, but basically by everybody in the community. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, I know there's some people that don't use it, though. Right? Why? There's probably some of you who would absolutely disagree with me. Because it requires a certain type of gameplay. Right? Which is why it's not generally accepted as the meta. And a lot of pieces that require certain, like going in scope... Like focus, focus is the strongest chess piece in the game. Am I wrong about that? But people don't agree that it's the meta because it requires you to go in scope, right? So that's why it doesn't fit the general mass population because not everybody can play in scope. So it's generally why it's not meta, accepted as meta, we should say. But um, Hunter's Fury, go back to Hunter's Fury. Hunter's Fury is argued as, hey, look at this guy. As one of the, is the if not the best one of the best sets okay so we'll just say one of the best sets right but it's up there definitely top three like with this new gear set that's coming out the number one question is why wouldn't i just wear hunter's fury why would i just you know with the new gear set why wouldn't i just wear hunter's fury you see that a lot that's the question okay i'm coming to a point here i just want to make sure we accept that right and you, you accept it why do you accept it 
because these guys that are that are unmovable objects these unmovable objects have forced you into believing that now maybe you, you agree with that 100 percent. maybe it is i'm not saying it isn't but that's whose consensus you bought into right this is like well you know if the legendary speed runner is using it then it's got to be the best set because that's who's the most credible person in this game why is he the most credible person in the game because he plays the same mission over and over again to the point where he's mastered it <laughs> yeah. do you understand that's ridiculous right do you know how many hours do you think that legendary speedrunner gets that speedrun time on his first try even if he's done the mission a million times absolutely not and when you see their videos do you notice that there's these things laying all around the battlefield that there's already uh, loot out there when he, when he, and he's shown you his recording there's already loot on the field of course of course because he didn't do it on his first try it took him maybe a hundred tries and we finally got that time that day maybe it took him a thousand tries you know when i was learning how to solo legendary it took me hundreds of tries but hunter's fury is the one of the best sets in the game it's 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 it's, it's that's been passed on to you by the the experts who who has for some reason been determined it's the it's not the youtubers it's the speed it's not the, the twitch streamers it's the guys that are speed running things right and i get it i get it we speed run things too right and so it takes the mastery it takes practice it takes trial and error you know what i mean okay so here's where the line starts to blur right It's your, what if your play style isn't close and personal like Hunter's Fury? Is Hunter's Fury weakened in a, what if you don't do legendary speedruns? Let me put it that way. What if you don't do legendary speedruns? What if you are playing with average Joes? What if you are playing with your clan members? Okay, now you I, we, I've been making this argument lately and it has to do with the memento this argument parallels with the memento argument So it's the same question you can say about the, the memento, right? So there's a lot of people that uh, say the memento is only good in um, Solo play and that it's no good in group play, right? And we've been challenging that for a while now, but the point is is that the hunter's fury is weakened in team group play unless you're playing with experts you know exactly what to do with it let me give you some examples hunter's fury requires you to get out of cover it's a play out of cover it's a run and gun gear set right even the speedrunners are using it that way right they're they're basically blitzing that's why i call that uh build a blitz but they're doing what i'm doing they're running out of cover they're getting in front of the enemy and they're basically shooting the enemy before the enemy shoots them to kill them right to get in the kill shot in before the enemy even gets a couple of shots off most of the time right and so on legendary or speed runs you're playing with basically guys that have played that mission a thousand times and know what you're doing right they know what you're doing notice the way i said that i didn't say that i didn't say that you're playing with pros i didn't say that i didn't say you're playing with pros i said you're playing with guys that played that mission a thousand times there's a difference right and so when you're playing with those guys oh yeah hunter's fury is absolutely the best there's no question about it i won't challenge that fuck no like i love hunter's fury if, they, if you're playing with a team that knows how to use it that knows that and basically how they're using it is they're dividing and conquering so they said you bust the left i'll bust the right you go down to center we'll uh, kill everybody that comes out of that door and then i'll meet you at the next checkpoint that's what's happening that's what's happening right but let me tell you if they're now now let's move to the other scenario let's go to your average joes right you're playing with somebody you've never played before maybe it's random matchmaker or maybe it's somebody in your clan but you're not highly coordinated legendary speed runners you with me now okay this will listen to the story so you're running you're playing you're running hunter's fury they're running whatever 
because again you're not highly coordinated legendary speedrunners your builds are not coordinated coordinated you're just running legendary maybe even one of them's a healer <laughs> you know what i mean cool all right doesn't matter doesn't matter what their builds are this is that you're running hunter's fury now you get out there okay so you're like ah i'm running hunter's fury right now as a matter of fact so let's do it uh look i'm playing with these mojos right okay yay we're cool and then boom i kill this guy right now i start taking damage right now i'm gonna take damage if i don't kill this guy i'm dead just like what just happened right so i let myself die on purpose obviously so if I don't get that kill, I'm dead. So that's on me. I didn't get that kill, right? What if my ally gets the kill? I'm also dead. I'm equally as dead, right? So I'm focusing on this guy right now. Like, I got like, okay, I'm taking damage in the back, which I'm not, but let's hypothetically. And then if I don't land that shot, I'm taking damage in the back because I've exposed my belly. I'm out there and I'm vulnerable. And my team comes by and steals my kill. I don't get my 40% armor on kill. I am naked. I am exposed. I am a shieldless. I am in legendary. I am dead. And then that is the worst set in the game. <laughs> you understand? So what I'm trying to tell you is that there's a context to every build. And it has to do with the level of skill in which you are playing with. The worst build could be the best build, depending on your team. And so that's why these guys, these guys, that's never part of the question. That's never brought up in the in the conversation. They're saying it's the best build. Well, only for you, because you're doing legendary speed runs with the with the best players in the fucking game, the top 1%. So yeah, your Hunter's Fury is amazing for legendary. But for me, it, I get nothing but deaths. I cannot play like you. I do not play like you. I don't want to play like you. Right? But I want to use that gear set. Is it any good? Let me know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so what I, my point is, is that the gear set, it's in the, it's, it's, there's a perspective on all the gears. And that's the variable that is never measured correctly. It's a variable that's never measured correctly. It's left out in every build video. It's left out in every conversation uh, presented by these uh, these unmovable objects. They never bring that into the conversation that, well, it performs because my team is crack shots and they, la they land that shot. They never miss with the Regulus, you know? It, maybe it's because they're on the PC. Maybe, I don't know, you know what I mean? Oh, man, I missed that. That's bullshit, by the way. Like, right there, right? Like, if I didn't land those shots, I would have been dead. I was absolutely going down. Sorry. Hold on a sec. Hold your thought. Let's finish these fools. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Is this is this, is this this clicking for you? Am I, or am I being a little too abstract? I realize it took me a while to get to the point. But, you know, I'm still going back to that thing. Like, like... If you don't have in the evaluation of any build, like if that is not presented clearly with all the variables, right? There's a lot of variables in that. Is am I better than Reaper? Did is Reaper better than me? Is Reaper like a crack shot? I'm just using Reaper as an example, but like, you know what I mean? Or is Reaper a dud? Right? Am I playing with a bunch of randoms? Like that is a big, big, big factor on any build. It's not the solo thing or group thing. It only works good for solo. It only works for group. Hell no. Builds get stronger in group. Hello? Why do they get stronger in group? <laughs> I have this argument all the time. It frustrates me. This one frustrates me. Builds get stronger in group because you got team buffs. And for the people shooting at you. Shooting at that target. Weakening that target. Okay. That guy right there. I one shot at him. Right? Got it? Of course. If there were three other guys with me. Okay. And all three of them are playing like I know there's a, I hate saying this word like you're supposed to, which is we're the underdogs. We should be sticking together, focus firing. OK, right. Just bear with me there. Then they would have all been shooting at that guy. He would have been weakened. And my 22 million headshot would have been overkill. Right. I would have been overkill. And I would have said to you, I am a fucking God invulnerable best build in the game right look i had four guys with me i wasn't running solo but running with four guys makes me 
even stronger. If I go down, is somebody gonna pick me up? This control point officer hardly picks me up. And you guys know that because <laughs> I yell at him all the time. He hardly picks me up, right? I, can, I can't communicate with him. I can communicate with my, my four man squad. I can say, hey, somebody shoot that guy that's shooting me in the back, please, right? So again, the build is only as good as your team or you, your skill level, right? And it's such a variable in this game that I think that it neutralizes almost every fucking build in the game. I gotta say that, like almost every game build, almost every build in the game, like, like can be neutralized to the same point. Like it's only as good as you and or your team, depending on how you're using that. That's the power of a build. And all of our build videos uh, don't show that. And that lately I, I have some build videos that actually do. Um, but they, you know, they didn't have this conversation in mind. They were just coincidentally like where we're like the heart, the heartbreaker versus uh, striker video where I ran in with the same team and it was competitive killing. Right. And also and when we created the Hitman, right, it was the same team and it was competitive killing situation you know where i was playing with another really good player and we were both playing aggressive and we were dividing and conquering you know instead of instead of shooting at the same target because if we you guys know that right you see like you know maybe the running hooker and he says solo legendary build and as soon as you click on the video he's not doing solo legendary he's doing group legendary and then the first thing you say is like you, you said solo legendary i'm watching group either way he's showing showcasing this build in this legendary checkpoint and they're shooting one target and three other guys are shooting that target too that target dies and he says this build is so op right what just happened well those three targets made the dps look really fast right a high damage value does not mean good dps you get that right that's only one component of dps you got to land the shots reload time right rpms these are all factors you got to even armor, in my opinion. So my definition of DPS is a little bit different, but even armor. The reason why in regen is because you, you can't be, like if you're able to uh, maintain your shots out of cover without being suppressed. If you can take more damage while you're shooting, you're going to have better DPS than the other guy. <laughs> Does that make sense? Now, the testing range can't the testing range can't measure that. And so here's another one, PVP, right? And I, I, you know, I don't do a lot of PVP videos, um, but it's the same thing in PVP. You'll see somebody showing off their build and you're like, and they're like, there's a, a three teammates, it's three, it's just four on one, you know? And then they present the build. This is the best build in the division two. It, you know, everybody's, uh, it's always the same thing. They shred armor. It should, this is an armor shredder, you know? But it's like, but all the footage is, is four versus one, four versus two, that kind of shit. Maybe even four versus four, doesn't matter, but 32 million right there, that was nice. But there's lots of components to that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely, it's a fucking team situation, right? <laughs> so, but the point is, is like, it's, and you might argue, well, it's really hard to demonstrate a build in PVP because um, this, I mean, trying to get footage of somebody like in a one-on-one -on -one situation might take you forever, you know, because you're playing in groups like you should be. Hello. Let me ask you this, guys. When you go into skirmishes, uh, do you think you're more effective when you just go Han Solo and, and leave your team behind? Or are you more effective when you run with the other three players on your squad? I mean, you're probably, you're probably more effective by running with your team, right? There's a medic right there. Boom, down, 32, 32 million. Let's see, where's this guy? Did he jump? Oh, he's up there. Let's see ya. You found me, I found you. Thank you, come again. And so, so the, that's kind of, I mean, the, you know, the, so it's a little abstract. I realize it gets a little abstract, but I guess what I'm saying here is that 
uh, it's it's really really the effectus of the build is is so much influence on any build coming from the masters coming from a newbie it's so based on the skill of that player it really is <laughs> you know what I mean and so it makes it really it makes it really hard those to to really make anything stand out you know so if i mean and if that's acceptable if that argument is acceptable if that's like if i guess here's a way to put it if hunter's fury can be the at the same time be the best build in the game and be the absolute worst build in the game at the same time Does that leave room <laughs> for the possibility that build diversity is, is something that can be great in this game, enjoyed in this game, allowed in this game, or however you want to say it? What's the argument that we want to say there? What am I trying to say there? I don't know. I'm trying to formulate it. But my point is, is like, there's a, the point I'm trying to make is about the, the, if a build can be both the best build in the game and the worst build on the game based on who's using it. Then there is no meta. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say like then what are we trying to accept here, right? I'm trying to for, uh, think through that. So maybe maybe that's what I'm trying to say. There is no meta. There is no mandatory build formula there is no and, and i think that's what the devs are trying to show us right that's uh, that's with some of the the stacking crap that they're giving us and you know that, i think they already know this right they they already know this i think they always have but i, I don't necessarily think they want to tell us that because if you believe there's like you're gonna farm for these build like there's some level of like if you so let me put it this way if you believed that like here, here's an example like your build doesn't have to be god rolled to be great because that's part of that's the same concept right that's another example that's another example that's part of drinking the kool-aid i drink the kool-aid there i'm a fucking kool-aid drinker i go out and I, I when i love these builds i'll start farming them i want it to be god rolled before i even create the video you know and i'll go out there and fucking farm this thing until my eyes are bloody because i gotta get this fucking thing god rolled so i can create the video but it doesn't have to be god rolled it's gonna be effective without being god rolled right i know that too i know that builds don't have to be god rolled This is how you kill a boss. This is a easy. This is why I call it the cheat code. Let's see if I can get it off for him. Ah, a jump. Yeah, he eventually gets pissed off though. <laughs> Alright. You can play from cover, but you know, proving a point here. There it is. He's about as tanky as they get. Took us about three shots, maybe four. Yeah, but I'm thinking, yeah, so I'm thinking, like, there is no meta, right? But, like, what if you knew, what if the community started realizing that as a whole? That, holy shit, and I, and I know this as a fact. Like, you know, like, that if I took my favorite build, my striker build, whatever, and I took all the rolls and made them at, like, 50%, it's going to perform the same. At the end of a legendary mission, you know, I'm going to have basically the same damage. I mean, this is, this is rocket. This isn't rocket science here, right? Like, here's a crazy thing. There's so much to this. Oh, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. I'm going to get into some subjects that hurt. These are all examples, right? Big, big discussion things that I, I hope they do influence the way you think about it, because it's going to save your life hours of gameplay and sweat. Like, here's one, like the, the discussion, oh, the discussion that's happening a lot right now is also like, um, uh, what do we call it? The expertise system. And 
people are putting out videos and arguments that the expertise system doesn't really make that big of a difference anyways uh and a lot of this conversation is it's about the pvp stuff so we're okay but my point is is like i don't notice it i have like on my i don't have any expertise on any of these weapons and i don't notice it uh, on my backpack i have 10 percent uh more armor i don't notice it on the weapons that i do have expertise on i also don't notice it so i have expertise on my regulus i absolutely don't notice it you know and so is it more damage yeah is it enough damage to say that it saves my life or keeps me alive or it's the difference between life and death there we go i don't notice that no no because when i didn't have that damage i was still surviving i was still one-shotting i was still critting i was still whatever it is right and so does it is temp but the flat out point is we know so i'm level 11 so that means i got 11 percent more weapon damage on those weapons that i choose to add expertise to but it's not rocket science 11 percent damn more damage is more than not having 11 percent more damage we accept that right it's easy math <laughs> who wouldn't right easy math well it's just like okay well it, it, i'm gonna have 11 percent more damage that's a lot 20 percent sounds like a lot doesn't it 20 percent more damage imagine having an extra red core that's basically plus it's like an extra red core plus right and so we're like yeah i want that right and then you got these guys in pvp who were saying like but let's not go to the pvp conversation yet let's not go there yet okay so listen so here's a reaper so reaper is a level 20 right reaper you're level 20 we both have the capacitor my capacitor is probably like level 10 so his capacitor is 100 percent stronger than mine temper or it's actually you know 10 percent he's got 10 percent more damage coming out of that right so at the end of a legendary mission you would think that would reflect in his damage numbers but would it what did we not what is a factor that we're not taking into consideration right only if we played an identical game game and we do a lot right we play pretty close to the same i would probably say as our uh right so we're both aggressive again like i said playing the same missions together similar builds but what the game isn't telling you about is like if, if i landed three more shots hitting at a million each then I'm probably going to supersede that 10% weapon damage advantage that he has, right? At the end of the score thing, I, yeah, I'm just throwing random math. I, don't trust the math. I'm just I'm giving examples there. But my, my point is, is like, if I land a couple more shots, I'm saying just a couple, right? <laughs> a couple of more shots that happen to be crits with all of my things procced it's gonna level that you know if my if my uh accuracy is maybe like one percent better than his across 115 enemies if we're doing a dynamic duo legendary right so there's 215 enemies in total let's say he gets 50 percent of the kills i get 50 percent of the kills whatever if my accuracy was just a little bit better you know there's a good chance that the damage output that i get to be putting out is better and so it it, it it's, it ends up being negligible right but like if you but if you if you think about things like that ooh, the devs aren't gonna like it right they don't know no 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 no. don't shed light on that kind of stuff because it defeats the looter shooter that's part of the looter system you get the expertise as a looter system you have to buy under the looter system you have to it's like what would happen if we all stopped believing in the, in the, in the almighty dollar, <laughs> right? It'd be like the whole country would collapse. This game would collapse if you start thinking that way, right? And so, you know, that's why, we, you know, but it, there, there's some reality to it. And so, uh, you know, and I don't press the subject too hard, but my point is, is like, you know, that same concept in the expertise system, it also folds back into gear itself. So my point is that you don't need a God rolled striker build. It doesn't need to be God rolled to be effective and to be a top performer, you know, and like we could prove that out on one of these on one of these days. I would love to. I would love to, uh, you know, is to put on and I already do. We already do. Right. But inadvertently, you know, so but not intentionally. And so I would like to do it with intention. So go into a legendary, you know, and then just like I'll run a build at half staff, basically and uh and somebody else run the same exact build at full power and let's see where our numbers end up at the end 
you know what i mean and i would give it the the advantage like i'll give the other guy the the uh benefit of the doubt that his number is going to be higher than mine at the end but my point is is it going to fucking matter <laughs> and it's not is it going to be the difference between life and death if i think about that so i got six uh, i got uh four pieces of striker if i was missing on five percent damage on each of those that's 20 percent damage i'm missing right you know is that going to change my survivability am i not going to feel like i'm a killing god you know can i even tell at all probably probably you know what i mean i'll probably be able to feel it a little bit if i go because that's pretty excessive to run every single piece at half staff right but at the end of an hour's gameplay on legendary it's not going to make that big of a difference it's not i've seen it not i know it's not you know but on a single enemy yeah you might feel it but over a hundred uh, over a hundred enemies it's not it's going to level out it's going to level out you know what i mean and so and so that, that all of this is a contra my point is, is like how is this all related it all ties back it's all a contradiction to that meta conversation right because it, it's all leading back to the same thing it's like it's all really the skill of the player that defines the build in the end i wanted to get that head through that barrier see if i could do it no and i love builds and i'm a big i'm really enthusiastic about builds and you know so i'm not trying to demean them but if the uh, my point is like if a, the same build can be the meta and the worst build in the game <laughs> you know what i mean i gotta say that i think that the biggest factor is is uh who's using that build not the build itself you know and so if that is actually the case if that can be uh bought into then build diversity exists <laughs> i think that's that's or maybe it's better to say it the other way there is no meta there cannot be a meta you know there cannot be uh a, a one and only dps build right what if you suck using uh one and only god D dps build like what if you suck at the m1a what if you suck with the m1a right what if you suck playing at distance? What if you suck playing close up? You know? And so it's just like the guy, the people that are, are writing the rules are playing. Many of them are playing with the same mission over and over again with the same people over and over again who have been playing the game since day one who are really good at the game, you know, and that mission. And so that build is only good with that with with in that perspective in that perspective I would say you know nice and if the god and I and uh, if I put on the build. It's a new perspective. It has that has to be taken into consideration. I don't think you can just do that blindly. You know what I mean? Every build is gonna. It's it, there's it, there's just almost no way. Well, I guess we basically have to agree on a set of standards. <laughs> you know what I mean? But one of them is is like, damn, I don't know. I, the standard is one of the standards is like, who's the referee in all of this? You know? And are they impartial? And so far, I can't say that's the case. You know what I mean? I can't say the people that are the ones that have done this uh, set those standards in the past are not impartial unfortunately you know what I mean uh, either because they're the demonstrated uh, they're demonstrating these things in a vacuum uh, only with the best players people that know what they're doing I don't know and it doesn't really matter in the end right <laughs> and so and then there's that right like at the end it's again it's just like this build in order for it to live it has to have build diversity 
and so i think the, one of the most important things i think the set of standards that i live by is is it effective right does it do what it's intended to do And so, and I think by, uh, by, by putting it that way, I think it takes the user into consideration, right? I think it takes place out of consideration and experience, you know? Like, like this isn't a, a build for newbies per se, right? You know what I mean? So like, like, so if you were like, you know, Underwatch 100 and you're new to the game and I'm just gonna be like, there's probably a lot you gotta learn. Probably a lot of the success to, uh, of this build and me being able to survive like this is knowing who I can one shot, who I can't, the route, the path I take, isolating to my targets, you know? Knowing the nuances about the riot foam, the bounce, bounce, kill thing, you know? And, you know, if I'm better than you at this game, that's a temporary thing, you know? Everything I'm done is only everything I'm doing is uh, only possible because I've put hours into this game. So when you get here, but you got to be willing to try too, right? Like, oops, that was a bad shot right there. Fuck. That's the other part. So if you never try headshot builds, you're never going to get good at them is my point, right? But that aside, wow, oh, they keep giving me this fucking guy, this fucking helmet. This one's like pretty good at uh, shooting while he's under riot foam too. So I got to see that more than any of the other bosses. I got to say that. I don't know why. Bosses have a little bit more ripe uh, status effect resistance, but this one, I got a lot of status effect. I got a lot of status effects. I should be able to hold on to them a little bit better. Oh, look, and he just rolled right out of that. Yeah, it comes down to skill. Yeah, right, Matthew? Skill is the biggest factor in the game. And the thing is, is that none of the builds presentations really take that into, into account, right? And I think that's the angle. I mean, I, there's some argument there that needs to be... Um, Oh, I guess honed in on for this, for this, you know, this all goes back to this guy, this unmovable object, right? Um, how do you deal with them? Do you argue with them until you have the face is blue? And if do, if you do, what is your strongest argument? What is your strongest argument? You know, Uh, because I think one that we always rely on and if for some reason it doesn't fucking work is just like dude if you actually believe that way then there's no there would be no game diversity I mean there would be no build diversity and then everybody would be running the same builds and they would agree with you <laughs> you know what I mean and they're like yeah that's a fucking problem fucking devs you know what I mean and it's just like okay so we didn't get anywhere with that one <laughs> you know what I mean it's just like dude you're the problem right you're like you're the problem like right like But I think, and that's why I like to use a Hunter's Fury run because I can take that Hunter's Fury conver conversation, that, that angle, and we could apply it to um, the memento, right? 
the hunter's fury is the same conversation as the memento so these guys these same guys of course say that the memento is shitty in group gameplay okay so let's look at this build and let's compare it to the alternative which would be this vigilance backpack right i'd be able to put crits on here it'd be amazing headshot damage and weapon handling right but vigilance you'd be like that's multiplicative damage bruh that's multiplicative bruh right that's better than the memento yeah but that's fixed isn't it fixed at 25 doesn't my memento pick up uh an extra 15 percent damn base damage every time i grab a trophy right those spikes of damage help me right wait doesn't vigilance get disabled if i'm running and gunning out of cover like i can't get that disabled i'm taking damage on purpose it'll be disabled the whole time my 30 percent weapon damage might not be multiplicative off my memento but it's always up even if i'm taking damage how can you say vigilance is better <laughs> right well i got i got okay well you can say well you started with no trophies and vigilance is there from the beginning okay I'll, okay but don't you think it's worth it to that sacrifice is worth it when you're also going to get three percent armor regen you're going to get 20 percent bonus armor you get 30 percent skill efficiency is vigilance giving you any of that is vigilance giving you skill efficiency then cool how about regen right three percent even if you're running a bell stone you weren't going to get that right even if you're running a bell stone you're only going to get one percent a fraction of it and be like well okay you're going to start it at zero this is the same argument so right? you're going to start it at zero but you know it's going to take you a while to get to your full 30 percent okay cool so you're talking about your skills but what if i'm a, what if i'm good at killing people <laughs> you know what i mean like you see there right <laughs> there we go it's the same argument right it does not depend on you so if i'm playing with the top uh if i'm playing with the top players in the world then and i'm the worst player in the world then you know they're gonna yeah i'm not, I'm not gonna have any kills i'm playing with a bunch of randoms and i happen to be the best killer in the field i don't think it matters what fucking backpack i have right <laughs> i could run adrenaline rush you know and probably still get more kills right if i'm the best killer in the field well you know there's all these arguments right but it then comes down my point is is at the end when you when you start going through those motions it it ends up going all it ends up at well it just comes down to the skill of the player now doesn't it right that's where it ends that's where the argument really ends well like well you know there you you can be competing for kills and be like and still be competing for kills with vigilance <laughs> right but i'm gonna be when it's disabled i'm gonna be not doing a very good job at competing for kills you should always be competing for kills in this game okay we got the basis of it okay we got we got the basis of it but if hunter's fury is the best gear set in the game all right which is arguably arguably so okay and it's got so many applications to it you can run it with assault rifles you can run it with a smg shotgun sniper rifles as we've proven out uh, you know you can run it with anything right either way it's it's the reason why it's good is because why oh my god the same people that hate the same people that hate hybrid builds are the same people that say hunter's fury is one of the best sets in the game this is a hybrid build do you not look do you not see it that do you not see that it's got damage and armor on kill and status effect red blue yellow <laughs> it's because they're colorblind all they see is green right so but this is a this is a this is a hybrid build man this is the hunter the hunter's fury is the memento of gear sets do you understand that this is the memento of gear sets the stuff that we love is always a hybrid and you just don't see it for what it is and you will not ever call it a hybrid you will never call this a hybrid gear set right because that's like it's like the antichrist of these people right like so like you know what i mean but it is absolutely is right you run the backpack it increases your status effect range right you run the chest piece it increases the duration of your debuff right so like you know which is which is a, a, 
a damage side of things, right? So, but this is a red, blue, yellow uh, piece. My point is though, it's a memento, same story. Okay, so the memento, if you don't get your kill, you don't get that trophy, true? Cool, but you're still fucking alive, aren't you? Okay, the Hunter's Fury, if, if your ally gets your kill, if you're competing for that kill, you are not gonna get your armor on kill. You're also not gonna get your amplified damage, right? So you're gonna be under armored because you took damage and you're gonna be underpowered because you didn't get your Apex Predator stack, right? Same thing, you're still competing for kills with the Hunter's Fury set. You have to get your kill with Hunter's Fury or you will not get your recovery. There's no repair skills on this thing. You know what I mean? It requires a kill to survive. That is the, the epitome, right? Of competing for kills. This is the memento of gear sets. It is the one these same people are saying is the best gear set in the game. And these same people are saying that the memento is not good for groups. How was the Hunter's Fury good for groups, but not the memento? This has stacking in it. Look there. Killing the debuffed enemy with your weapon. Disorients other enemies within five meters and amplifies weapon damage by 5% for 10 seconds. Stack it up to five times. There's a timer on that for 10 seconds, which means you constantly have to kill to keep stacking. And then it goes away. Just like the memento, you're starting with zero, but not as, but the memento <laughs> that sticks with you for 300 seconds. This is only 10 seconds. You see? The pros and cons, I'm being dramatic. My point is, is that it's the memento of gear sets. The same people are saying you can run this in group, you can run this in legendary, but you cannot run this one in groups and you cannot run this one in legendary. <laughs> the irony there is crazy, right? But it's just all perspective, it's a matter of perspective, right? It always is, always was, always is, always was. Yeah, for good guys, good guys, how do we get those watches? I guess we killed rogues. I think how we got these watches, because isn't this backpack, um, Matthew's question there is like, this Mac, this backpack, we killed somebody to get it. It came with a, um, a, one of the seasons, right? I think that was like the assumption. And I think it was, was it a hyena? Let me see, the, the memento came in, what season was that, guys? Um... It came at the same time the backfire did. So season 10? Is that right? That sounds right. Or was it 12? No, it had to have been way it had to have been way back there in 10, right? Yeah, so it's somebody else's backpack, I think. I think it was like I took it from a watch. See, I took from those who watched, hunted, and collected until only their shadows remained. Now my watch has ended, so yours may begin. But I think that's what happened. I think that we we killed like well, it looks like an outcast backpack though, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like an outcast backpack because of that that pattern on it? So it might be outcasts. But I th that's the assumption I always took. Like we killed the guy who was out there killing agents. And uh, those a the watches of the fallen are still on us. I don't know. That's just how I've interpreted it. I don't remember. That's not for fact. That's what I, that's the story I'm believing. Okay, let's do some mods. We can do some mods here real quick onto the build. Um, let's see where are we right now? It's actually a pretty good farming day. So backpacks here. If you're looking for some protection from elites, you got that. Holsters isn't a horrible. Marksman's, I'm not, I don't mind marksman's. Pistols, I, I don't mind a good pistol, but I almost have everything, so. Um, this sucks, <laughs> fortunately. It works, that gear set rigor. Was it season eight? Was it that long ago? Yeah, it should be a long time ago, right?
Yeah, no, I we I love the memento for group or solo. It works for me in all scenarios. It does, and I get the other side of the argument. So I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not dense. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I read the description. It, it, it doesn't quite tell us. I mean, it looks like it's a hunter. It says, I took from those who watched, hunted, and collected. I mean, it definitely looks like a hunter's backpack because of the, uh, the axes, right? I thought it, it, it kind of reads to me like this person was killing hunters. You know what I mean? I took from those who watched, hunted, and collected, right? You see what it's saying? So I, I guess I'll interpret that maybe differently, which is I interpret that whoever was originally on this backpack killed a hunter who was a collector, right? I took from those who watched, because you know how the hunters, the watch, they they kind of sit on the rooftops and watch you, and they're obviously hunted and collected, which means like the hunters were out there killing division agents, right? And so this was a hunter's backpack i guess or but the way i read it the way i kind of read it is like this person killed a hunter who w is a watcher a hunter and a collector until only the shadows remain now watch has ended so yours may begin i, I don't know now my watch has ended my yeah i don't know Yeah, that's a good point. If the hunters were the first wave division agents. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, Rails, it was with the season. It was the same time. Yeah. So uh, you got the rich rays uh, at the top of summit. The memento came on the rewards track. Uh, and then um, capacitor. I, f I feel like that was 12 season 12. I'm sorry. Am I saying 12? That's title update 12. That's what I meant. Title update 12. And that sounds like, well, we're at title update, you know, 15, 16. So like, you know, that wasn't that long ago. Well, I just think that we, it was actually a long, a long ago because we didn't get any title updates for a long time, right? There was no title updates. And so it was actually a long time ago. We just had a big gap between the title updates. I think that's. That's why it sounds funny when you say title update 12, but I think it was 12. Okay, so we're going to make a couple of quick changes, but let me change something here real quick on the settings. thing um cool okay so i think what i want to do here what i want to test is um, there's a couple things we need to test on this build. One, do we really want that extra armor core? And I, and I think yes, because I think that bonus armor is keeping bonus armor is keeping us alive. But what I want to do is also uh, get rid of the skill tier again, and then try putting on some skill haste uh, to complement the skill uh, the skill efficiency. Because at the end of the day, it's 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 all the things that are coming with the riot foam. The an extra skill tier is in snare duration is the most important thing but 
I would say that haste is even more important in the duration. We have a lot of duration, probably more than I can use. And the reason why is because we're really one-shotting enemies, right? And snare duration. So the biggest threat to the riot foam, it tends to be skill haste oh, when we run out, which is really skill haste. And the skill tier doesn't give you that. But what it does give you is an extra riot foam. But would I rather have, you know, 20% more skill haste across, you know, all my canisters or the extra riot foam? So I just want to try it. Uh, the only way that's the only way I'm gonna know. So I'm gonna add, uh, and the other the other way we'll try too is that we can leave the core yellow and add skill haste anyways. You know what I mean? Um, but let's see how much skill haste I even have on this fucking thing. I got two, so we can't max it out because apparently all my skill haste is elsewhere. I'm actually pretty sure I got a stronger chest piece than this. Let me look. Could be my other character. Like the Overlord might be a good idea here too, by the way. You know, get more damage out of that rifle. Uh, but running the Walker applies to both weapons. So, you know, I'm kind of torn. It's already on my character. Yeah, like this one, so the Overlord, because I'm using the 1886 a lot. And then if I went this way, then that would help the Nemesis proc stronger. Um, otherwise, I, I was thinking about running this one. Or I could even run that one. See, I'm missing 2% weapon damage and 2% uh, headshot damage. This is going to bring both of those back. I could also put skill haste here or even status effects. Think about that. Or even on the build I'm running. What if I took away the weapon hand? I think a little bit of weapon hand is probably a good idea. I don't have any. But if we're playing so close and personal, I mean, is that 8% weapon handling really helping me? I don't know. The only way to know is to take it off. Right, so um, I guess we're gonna have to try it. It won't conflict with the headshot damage, so um, well. So that means I'm gonna have to keep the one I want. So let's go ahead and put. Um, I'm gonna put skill haste there. The chest. I'm really trying to perfect this build because it's it's pretty unique. So I could put status effect or skill haste. Uh, I'm thinking skill haste. I think th that's the weak point. It's like when you find yourself, you got five guys around you and no riot foam, and it does happen. You're like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Um, so let's do that. So we got three. We'll have three skill haste mods. In essentially, right? So you got one. Oh, I thought it just changed you. Oh, I see. I'm full here. Got to delete something, I guess. But all this stuff I'm eventually planning on using. I guess except for fire burn. I know. I know. They're like, you're not going to use those. I know. <laughs> Some of them, though. God, I never know what to delete. With, you know, I got 30 fucking mods in here. I gotta clean these out. I guess armor and kill is the weakest, but those are hard to get maxed out, you know? Disrupt resistance, I've, I've been planning on a build for that. Bleed resistance is important for the the backfire. Pulse resistance, I'm still working on getting maxed out ones. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. That's for PvP. Um... I guess I can get rid of a low pulse resistance. Income repair, I use the income repairs, right? God, it's annoying. I've got nothing to delete here. Just nothing. I'll just delete a couple of those. Yeah, you know, those armor kills, like, they're not very valuable at all. I mean, you never use them, but like, they're hard to get. The max ones are really hard to get. You'll get like, really close to max, but max one. Tends to be elusive and I want six of every mod if I had that's what I try to do so I want six of every mod All right, so that's the build so we just added basically uh, 12 24 
34%, nope, 36% skill haste. And so that's in addition to the 30% skill efficiency, plus the, well, it'll now be 10% skill efficiency on trophy pickup. So we'll see if that, uh, that constant 30 something is gonna help us, right? Uh, and we added a red core instead, so we dropped a skill tier, I mean, a, an ammo down to five instead of six. So I think, but I think if I'm if I'm thinking about it right, I think I'd rather have skill haste than that extra canister, and even this ensnared duration here, which I have two of everything apparently. I know I need to get rid of those. I've been planning on pushing these over to my other character, but that's just not going to happen, is it? So I'll just delete those. Two more mods to free up. Cool. So all right, let's give that a whirl. And remember, like, there's so many variables here. Like, we could run survivalist for armor on kill. Um, I'm sorry, from protection from elites. We could run a firewall for, and run the shield. You could do that, right? 10% armor on kill from gunner. If you do that, you can change your weapon talent. It's crazy, right? There's a lot of variables. The fact, what happened is by freeing this up, by taking off sharpshooter, it opens up this build to infinite possibilities. <laughs> Story of words says Tux. Uh, I keep getting maxed burn resistance, disorient resistance, and blind death resistant mods. Are they keepable? So I've deleted. I've decided that disorient resistance, blind death are deleted. I'm deleting all those. Same with um, the ensnare resistance. So dropping those two. See a Smitzy. I just realized that like. Um, they're just not being used enough. I mean, you may, I think if you do use them, you got cases inside, um, mostly PVP, but everybody decides to go, elects to go damage, right? And the reason why is because they only gonna protect you from one particular element and then you're gonna encounter. So let's say you put on the ensnare duration run, right? And then, um, you go against this guy with riot foam and then the other three guys you're fighting aren't using riot foam at all and so you're you're focused too much on one player what's up holly hollyhood holly what hollyhood so like you know what i mean they're too focused and same thing with it with the gameplay with anything but like at least the bleed ones are are what they do focus is is on um a, what they also focus on a weapon right so that's so there's that's the double sided uh to that thing to that mod uh, that it's effective there um now disrupt resistance i also works for that but about, but i'm liking it against hunters right so uh hunter shield build i've yet to create i've created a long time ago but i got to do it again um income repairs is obvious um pulse resistance again that's mostly a pvp thing um disorient resistance like i should probably dump that actually um i don't need to right now so i'll keep it but disorient resistance is like are you really gonna roll into that i mean it's basically for your shield right when your shield breaks you're gonna try to decrease that disorient or um or when you catch on fire it's the same thing right there's a disorient with fire but you're too you focus on only a single status effect so it's like you know if you're in pvp the other guys might not be uh, disorientating you well if you're if you're not running the shield right and then the problem is it's like well if you just killed them then they wouldn't break your shield so <laughs> you know what i mean a good offense is a better defense in some scenarios especially when it comes to that right because what happens when your shield is broken now your shield's broken and you got this disorient status effect that you're not using because you don't have a shield that cannot be broken So yeah, limited application is basically the reason why I've deleted those. But um, I do keep bleed. I think fire for some anti-fire builds are actually pretty fun uh, for those raids. Um, I haven't used them in a long time, so I don't know if it's something I would still do, but. See through the speaking of fire, huh?
tug, tug. Steady she goes. Tug, tug. Boom. Oh, I didn't get that one. Ooh. Those medics are a little tankier, aren't they? You gotta load up. We uh, technically added damage, so we shouldn't be uh, under damage here. We're just not stacked up yet. Trophies and the headhunter. And um, also Hunter's Fury, right? So all those guys stack. So there's a lot of stacking on this build, but it usually is quite all right because um, we're killing so fast. That's the point of the build. But otherwise, I do worry about when you got too much stacking on the build. It can, it can backfire on you, right? But since we're doing such a good job of chain killing, and that is the purpose of the build, it's allowable. Objection! I'll allow it. Tug, tug. Shoot. Oh, fuck. It's that guy again. Fucking back that guy's. Gotta thank God for that armor and kill, I'm telling you. Preservation saves my ass. Oh, nice. You just got hit with that, right? That grenade. So. Shouldn't have done that, but... Because I had to... I shouldn't have taken that damage. It's okay, but we made it. But uh, the reality is it was a bad choice because I wasn't holding the rifle. And the rifle would have given me preservation. I had the nemesis. So that's the thing, like, like I don't really feel the extra, um, weapon damage core like that's why originally i decided to go ahead and keep the skill tier and so we still might do that and keep the skill haze but originally we tried uh the okay, let's get this guy first oh what how did that not land oh my god you know what i mean that should have definitely been a headshot right it looked like it at least Like that right there i think it might yeah yeah i think that's typical i think it always confuses me when i'm not fully stacked up like there's a couple of shots like that where you're like how did he not just die with one bullet he should have died with one bullet i had it's like it's that combination of not having full stacks on this and that right Like the Hunter's Fury is completely cleaned out. Uh, we lo uh, timed out between the waves. The little green bar. That was fucking with me right there. Walk of death. But that's my favorite part. It's like, come back here. I feel it's like it's like the Scorpio build. <laughs> they try to run away from you, and it's like, come back here. So, but I do feel like we're using the, uh, the rifle a lot, which is good. Which way are we going here? This way? So we 
picked up that last shot. So we're gonna have to Right from this guy. So we got four canisters. That's a good sign Hold still One Two now, I could use a rifle, but I want to do the nemesis Consistent testing also a little showing off because <laughs> that's the point that's the crazy part of the build right like you got so much time on your right foam that you can hit him with the right foam you can switch between weapons reload sometimes and still you know settle up on that aim and, and pluck them off all right so okay we should be good to rock good to rock good to rock good to rock Let me uh, fix my sound real quick. What up, Darth? Sarka in the house. What's going on with you, green blood? Green blood. What's good on your side, man? What are you running lately? Go for it, Darth. Hunter's Fury backpack, which I never run. Um... I haven't, man. I haven't. Um, we were talking about that the other day. No, uh, hackers, are you on? Uh, what, what? What do you? What do you? Are you must be on PC? I'm guessing. Is that right? So Darth Sarka is saying, um, is wondering. He said that he just encountered a, a, a hacker in game tonight in the DZ. Oh, he's on the Xbox, so that's weird. Um, I know there there are ways to do it on console. Uh, I'm familiar with that, but not that familiar. <laughs> so, but I know there's just some things you can purchase. I think. Okay, well, there's. There's a couple of things, right? So there's invisibility glitches. So there's two things. There's one is a glitch and then there's some that it's possible to hack, but he might just be playing into a glitch too, right? So, which is, I mean, same thing is cheating, but yeah, but oops, there's this guy over there apparently. Don't you give me your nasty ass rifle? You're Han, your Han fucking solo, bro. I've never seen it on the council before, but I mean, but I have. I, I know I have. I just haven't really focused on it or like, I'm mean, like, I was like, that's weird. I've been shooting at that guy and I swear he didn't take any damage. Moving on. You know what I mean? Um, I was like, that's weird because I laid into half a clip. And so sometimes it's hard to tell because you don't know if it's like, you know, maybe it was uh, he procced uh, that that armor kit, that strong armor kit from firewall. You know, it could have been anything. Right. So sometimes. But obviously, if like you got this consistent situation and then you see you and your buddies are shooting him and it's like, well, he's invincible beyond in that armor kits time frame. And he doesn't have that many armor kits. But sometimes it's not that. Some guys build these, uh, also these really strong armor regen builds. I'm at another build. I take your word for it. He's just probably glitching or cheating. But um, sub, there are builds out there that you can have so much rifle foam that you can take a whole squad's damage and keep on going. You know what I mean? 
so we're at a right phone oh no we're not so let's see how this goes we're using the right phone a lot so that's what we want to do for the test so i like to give people kind of the benefit of the doubt and just assume it's something like that god damn it and then i switched to the wrong weapon there you go good example though the survivor the right phone like that's this uh, what you don't want is to run out of right see it was the right phone that saved me i guess is my point right you don't want to run out yeah report it well you should report it but yeah yeah so the the glitches are illegal to use yeah so this hunter's fury builds got uh destroyer it's all got the headshot damage over Headshot damage everywhere. Headshot damage everywhere. And then I just put in a couple of skill haste mods. So I took off weapon handling, uh, which is on my chest piece, and I put more skill haste there. And then I replaced. See, he's hard to hit because he's taking damage from the team, which is making his head jiggle. He's jig. He's he's a twitcher. And you can do this with pistols too. Uh, the build works with pistols. I've just chosen the rifle. But, and I do like the rifle because uh, of the range feature. It, it obviously has reach to it. Uh, and again, it's faster than the marksman rifle. So right here, you'll see why it's handy because I'm gonna have bad guys right on my ass, right? Bad guys. And that's how it works <laughs> so dude what i mean is like i noticed i didn't have to go run after those two riot foamers i just let i took them out of range and by doing that i i, I was able to stay by my uh, spawn point by doing that i was able to kill them before they even got out of their hole right and then out comes the right from again Missed that shot. Oh, I thought it was stacking. Fuck. I do that sometimes with the nemesis. There was no load up. See the loading on the nemesis? There you go. So you pull out the nemesis when you uh, when you duff a shot, right? That's basically what you're doing. And then that's recharging your chest piece. But as you can see, that right foam saves you a lot now. That was an error because that was an error, right? And the error was I I thought it was loading on my nemesis and I wasn't. Where'd that guy go? Way back there. And that's survivability, right? All the time in the world is the survivability ad. Okay, so we need to do a progression check. I'm using the regular 1886, so I think uh, Dark Darth. I think that the uh, regular 1886 is, is a better weapon than the Virginian. I have the Virginian though, and it's God World too. But I've given up on it right now. <laughs> I just did a whole stream the other day trying to make the Virginian good. And I know that's a controversial statement. <laughs> but uh, I was a big fan of the, the Virginian. And I even have a really good Virginian build that I created in the past called the Virginian. Um, and basically, uh, I'm using Headhunter on it. And I'm one-shotting things at 18 million. 19 million almost with that thing. And... But then I realized over time that uh, I started thinking about basically headhunter differently, the talent. So it's the talent that makes it bad. So there's a couple things like on the 1886. All right. So like 
the 1886 and is the base weapon for the virginian so we shouldn't have anything in here just checking okay so uh but what comes down to it is that the base weapon on this weapon is so strong that it's it's enough to one shot enemies if you can one shot enemies then you want to chain kill with perfect headhunter right that's what allows you to chain kill okay but once headhunter is procced whatever talent on your weapon if it's an offensive talent will be basically muted right and so that's what happens with the boomerang boomerang is 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 just turns into just an 1886 with no weapon talent anymore once headhunters procked and so it doesn't really add any damage value anymore right not after your first kill maybe a little bit after, upon each kill but you're talking really small numbers like hundred thousand increases but you're hitting in the millions you're one shot in anything everything so that additional damage isn't adding any real value and so if you want to uh, run a headshot talent then you need something that can stay active while a headhunter is is also active so 1886 allows me to put on preservation which gives me 20 percent armor on kill so at least i'm getting that but i can also run future uh perfect i can run you know in sync if i want to power up a skill or spike or whatever you know what i mean so that's kind of my thinking about that and so uh so that leaves the virginian without a chest talent and so because again if you power it up with the headhunter you might as well be using a regular 1886 so then i go like okay well what other build can feel good with that virginian and it's just like well fuck nothing because if you got the ability to one shot one kill then this weapon's got five kills in the mag the virginian's got maybe two right even if it sends those bullets back you're two-shotting three-shotting things sometimes more depending on how well you're critting and then you got to load a bunch of crits on your build and so then you can't have all the other perks of a head what a headhunter build can have which is weapon handling and reload speed and other fun stuff so it's a tough weapon to build around if you oh if you're if you come to that realization if you don't come to that realization then you know ignorance is bliss i'll just put it that way <laughs> It really is. Because I've been struggling with that weapon ever since I realized that. I mean, and you can... And you can still run it. I mean, if that inefficiency doesn't bother you, then you can still run it, you know? The Nemesis is basically the same thing, right? Like, once you got head under proc, the Nemesis loses its value. Uh, but what's valuable with the nemesis is the fact that when you lose your headhunter proc you can uh rely on the nemesis to get it back for you right like right there so when i switch out of the nemesis i'm almost up full stacks now i'm on full stacks or not apparently oh i just fucking killed him the rifle i hate when that happens Oh, she fucking moved. Just thought I was gonna be dead there, didn't you? I don't know how I'm missing some of these shots, so let's load up. Twenty six million on that boss. That was pretty cool. You see that right phone gives you all the time in the world though, right? You know, to miss some shots, load up, whatever you gotta do. I like farming when backpacks are in the field, which on the map, which they are today. I like farming like backpacks and chests are really fun to farm because they give you build ideas. still coming out of this hole they are yeah. 
I'm a cowboy, baby. I feel like a cowboy with this gun. Anybody else gonna come out of this hole? The Regulus would also be really cool here too, by the way. Um, if I didn't say that earlier. I'm just not using it because I'm going for headshots. Uh, I'm trying to break uh, my rank. But um, it's definitely more efficient to even go with the Regulus and blow shit up. I can demonstrate that too. But I think you guys have all seen the Regulus. Switch into that beast of a weapon, though, huh? What are we working on over here? Fuck. Keep coming. See, stop the bullshit. She was gonna go run away. God damn you. What are you, fucking peacock? <laughs> Bar your head real quick. Look at that guy. Look how far away he is. Come on. Can <laughs> the accuracy there. Right phone. Hold still for me. It's my favorite part, buddy. Except for my team shooting you. Point blank nemesis shot. Doesn't get better than that. Best build in the game. It's the meta. <laughs> Yeah, the Magnum is to be a real cowboy. Magnum with the 1886 and the White Death is a fun combo. Uh, Blue Rosebuds was asking if I did a, a double barrel shotgun build. We should try that. I don't have one right now, though, but that would be kind of fun, right? The thing's got like, a little bit of a kick to it, though, so, you know. <laughs> I don't know how reliable it's going to be. I do like the Magnums, though. I'm a big fan of them. I just uh, decided the D50 in the end was going to be probably my go-to. Um, but the Deceros is one of my favorites. The Police Magnum was my uh, original favorite uh, outside of the Regulus. But um, so let's switch out of for this next one. Let's go ahead and bring in the Regulus. And then let's look at our uh, progression real quick. So we started somewhere around 1,800. Uh, well, let's see here. Jump to me. All right, we dropped to 91. Nice. So we started at like somewhere around 8100. Uh, zero, zero. So got like. Basically 400 kills, 300 really, 300 headshot kills. Seemed like it was more than that. But that's good, so we're at 91, and so we're going for, um, to take out the Impaler. He's now 88, so he's actually bumped. So he's on the move, he knows we're coming for him. He was at 89. 
So it looks like uh, he's on the move. Um, I did spy that one, somebody in the clan, they get a Freedom Brigade at 78. So look at that Freedom Brigade. I'm not sure which Tux clan he's in, but that's impressive. Um, anybody, anybody in the Tux clans on Xbox with Freedom Brigade? But uh, this guy pulls in some serious XP too. I noticed like he, he, he takes like he's a, often in the top three in his on his XP board. So he's a player I like that. It's oppressive to see somebody on the Xbox with that many headshots kill. So yeah, so he's he was doing better than me, man. Like, wow. It's awesome. And so, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know much about him, but I did look at his build the other day. Actually, I did, uh, and he was running the Slaughter 2.0 build. I was even more impressed. I was like, "Oh man, this guy's cool. I gotta know this guy." So I reached out and I was like, "I added him as a friend. He's who was on the other, one of the other clans." So let me go back to him. Let's see if he's still running that build. But I thought that was cool. Freedom Brigade. So let's inspect player. Now he's changed it. Uh, oh, look, he's running one of our other builds. This is uh, the Ridiculous Regen one, there, with a Rockstar Regen. It's Rockstar Regen. This guy's cool. He's got cool builds. He runs a good selection. I like his style. I don't know him personally, but I want to. Oh, yeah, so we're going to take off. Uh, so I'm just going to put on whatever. The White Death is fine. And then we'll go ahead and put on the Regulus. Then I need to put on the scope on the white death because we need something for long range, right? Oh, I can't use that one. So let's put on crosshair one. We want crosshairs. There we go. All right. Tux on the move. Hostiles guarding location nearby. Yeah, I wish you could run explosive for the um... Oh, the top guy black tux. Oh, the top guy is all the same dude or Homies his name is um, obesity and somebody on the stream the other day said that they know him Do you guys know who obesity is anybody know him? Is he popular? I don't know But like um, I'd never heard of him. I thought he was a, a bot of some sort or a hacker But apparently he's a real guy See, look at they're all the obesity, and if you look, they're all the names are the same except for maybe like one letter. You see that? So lag ch lag ck lag obesity 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 obesity. So the only other one is this hiking creator twenty seven. But like, uh, and so there's a big leap between number twelve and then the obesity clan <laughs> people. But somebody says this guy sells XP. I guess have you ever heard of that? Never heard of that. Anybody know anything about that? Reaper Hawk knows obesity. There we go. Reaper, I didn't know you knew him. Is he a cool guy or what's he about? Yeah, yeah, I have a crush on that guy. We got to meet this guy. But well, whoever he is, he's got a fucking good handle on his headshots. So we don't have the nemesis, so that first kill is going to take a second, right? But like, that's okay. The uh, the Regulus is going to be strong enough to combat that. And the truth is, uh, just so you guys know, the TAC-50 is even easier to point blank snipe. Uh, this might get us killed. So if it takes you too long, what ends up happening is that they'll start swarming you, right? right here like if you can't like i haven't gotten one kill yet because i'm having to uh, displace that's trouble right i can switch is that not a headshot kill that's irritating if it wasn't if it wasn't fucking dicks
That's crazy. Is he? Uh, do you think all those other people are him, or are they in his clan? Because there's more than one obesity. You know what I mean? There's all these other obesities, and I'm trying to figure that out. If, if like, is he? Are they his minions, or are they separate separate accounts so that he can? I don't do his magic thing. And then how does he get people XP? Does he uh, have them run with him, or does he does he get inside their login? Is he basically Devine? Booster? So this with the right foam is like crazy, right? Because uh, you right foam and then we'll blow him up and then there'll be three status effects now, right? So we're gonna have bleed, we're gonna right foam and then we'll have um, the disorientation. Really? God damn it. You're going down, agent. Oh my god, you guys are being a pain in the ass today. It's the adjustment, you know what I mean? When you add a new piece to a build that you have a routine built on, it takes you a second to get adjusted, right? Jesus Christ. So I lost my headshot. God damn it. The riot foam took it for me. Fuck. The riot foam steals your headshot. Let me just kill myself. That sucks. Oh, so yeah, they pass over their... their their pass their passwords and stuff like that. So yeah, he's like Devine, basically. A one man Devine. That's crazy though, right? Because I mean, I always wonder about that Oh, oh Black Tux Widow, right on. I switched my name for your Bajar. Okay. I like it. Yeah, no, I've I've said that too before in the past. Like, beware of the black tux, you know. <laughs> I like it, man. Um, so like, Devine. I've always wondered about the Devine models. Like, man, how do they make money? Because they gotta pay somebody to actually do the boosting. Now, I was like, okay, so if they're if they're doing it overseas and paying somebody in like Pakistan, you know, ten cents an hour. Okay, I get it. You know what I mean? But like. Like if they go to do it, they have to go do a raid, right? To get the Eagle Bearer. And so that means there's seven other people that they have to pay. Seven other, right? Seven other people to pay. And it's just like, God, how much money are you making? <laughs> you know, you have to pay seven other people and that, you know, not very much. And so I, I guess my point is, and then we, I, I just reset this thing. And so then we got this guy who's doing it as a one-man business. I was like, wow. Oh, really? You like, he's up there, huh? But, like, do you think he's got minions that play for him? So that, you know what I mean? Because that's one man. So what if he's got three clients, right? Three customers. I mean, man, this guy never leaves his fucking computer, right? Or his Xbox. Oh my god, that's crazy. He's got to be busy. I mean, if people are paying for him and it's just like, wow, how much are they paying him? Because, geez. Is it worth it? I mean, you're playing the game anyways. I get it. But this guy might not have any gear. You know, the, the, the account that you're taking over might not have any gear.
or their gear might not be good enough to to do raids with or whatever not that a guy that probably rates at his level needs any particular build but for the sake of time and he's got to get so much xp i bet you he relies on a certain number of or a certain level of build strength loading up our trophies that's just also cool about this build is that you can just use your sniper rifle play relax in the beginning like and just load up on trophies. you just literally in the field with trophies you know you got the strength to do it why not so you're getting no value out of a hunter's fury by doing this right draw out of range so it's just it's all based it's all base damage she got me out of grenade got me out of cover with that grenade huh Grenade worked. I do like sniping, so I don't even mind every now and again just hanging back and cover and plucking skulls. White death feels good too. You got to get used to it. I mean, I think it feels better than the the nemesis for sure. Like how it, the weight of the weapon, the way it bounces, the recoil pattern, you know. Bust that helmet. Have to do it at some point, right? Yeah, shooting at the sky. You see that? Oh, I don't want to accidentally shoot his turret, so I let it be. Oh, I almost blew myself up. You got to be careful with that shit. That'd be flammable. Perfect. Patience. It really is patience. You see that patience there? I right, wait for it. Wait for it. He's gonna be hard because he's gonna he's get taken damage. So he's gonna bounce all over the place. And then I miss because of that. There we go. There we got all our trophies. He makes money, huh? It's his, yeah, he does, he's got scripts. Oh, that's crazy, bro. That's just a world like, wow, this guy must be a genius. He's making money and he's got some magical way to do it. You know what I mean? Like he's got some scripts, that, like it's crazy, right? Oh my God. Oh, I forget the wrong gun, huh? Patience. Actually, let's use a sniper here. I needed that. I wanted the extra damage, so. The, pis the pistol is actually easier to land. Oh, there's another fucking convoy coming. You see that? Another one. It's like double convoys in here. So we had an elite convoy, and then now these fools. So I don't have weapon handling, so I could feel it right there. The little sway in the rifle that, uh, you know, because we're not running technician. Bounce, bounce, steady. 
bounce steady. That reminds me of that uh, rock steady for the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> bounce, bounce steady. It's like rock steady. Random thoughts by Tux. Hold still. Coming from, I don't even know where these guys are, who I'm fighting anymore. Am I riding a control point or some sort of? I guess it's a control point. Oh, this guy. Oh. Oh, greedy. Okay, we're gonna have to hold you still, motherfucker. Gonna walk sideways. Lost my procs. Timed out, right? Can't get land a shot with that thing wailing on me, you know what I mean? Gotta take that yellow out because he's a bit pain in the ass with this turret. There it is. Alright, we're on the move. Oh, one of these guys. It. Reloading. So you can still play a little more relaxed, you know, for sure. Come on down. Really? What the fuck? <laughs> Sometimes I walk right through that rifle. I and mean, you saw that. I landed that right out of where we were supposed to be. But one thing I can tell you is we are not running out of that stuff very often. It's pretty fucking rare. That's what we want to see. And we still kill, got the killing power. And we lost 8% weapon handling. And it's not that big of a deal. Oh, shit. A whole nother fucking squad? I mean, this is a big control point, so... Kill this boss real quick. So we're about to get flanked. See that? Woo! I mean, if we could do this, this is a lot of survivability. This is another elite resource. I don't know what's going on, but there's a, we got two resources at least, I think, on this control point. Maybe three. Might be the same one, so two total plus the control point. But otherwise, a good possibility of a third. Fuck. Let's bust his helmet. Sweet. 
The only downside is the White Death has a little bit of a slower reload. Um, so to be, you know, using it back there is a little bit of an issue. Got him. That's it. Woo! Good control point. I like good fights, so, you know, I'm always looking for a good, good rumble in the jungle. Lifelong, what's good? Oh, yeah, man. What's your schedule like this week, Reaper? You're going to be on during the day-ish? My days are... What are you, two hours ahead? You're two hours ahead, right? Yeah. Like, today is a night stream, but tomorrow I'll probably be doing a morning. Monday mornings. I'm excited for fall to kick it around here. We still got some winter weather. I mean, summer weather. <laughs> but, uh... So you probably hear my might hear my uh, air conditioner in the background a little bit. I decided to shut that down. Eso Abyss, what up? Yeah, we got to see what Div J's uh, schedule's like too. Uh, for new content drops, get see if we can line up with him. Uh, figure out where we're gonna run day one. I mean, I know we're probably gonna run. I imagine uh, game over builds day one. The new legendary content drops. But like with guy, if like if Div G. If Div is going to be one of those guys, what would he run, I wonder, right? Before, he was our Riot Foam guy, and if we're not using Riot Foam, I mean, maybe we still do. I don't know. Or maybe he goes uh, skill damage on that bad boy. All right. So, so as you can see, it works. I think the downside is you probably, with this build... Uh, oh, Div, there you are. What's up, Div? What build would you run, Div? If we run skill damage builds for legendary and you want to roll with us um what would you run would you just run a skill damage build also because i imagine we'd probably go i mean reaper and i are probably gonna run um game over builds not to talk for reaper but probably i imagine but i know i am and so and that's because it's a world of unknowns and that's gonna help brace for that right because we haven't played that this guy's annoying. I don't like fucking dealing with him, but. Well, also what I was going to say, guys, if you're going to run the regulars with this, I'd probably recommend going back to sharpshooter. Instead of running the white death. I mean, you can. Nothing wrong with it, but the attack 50 will do everything just a little bit faster. And since you can't run double exotics, you know what I mean? And what I'm saying, talking about really is the difference in damage between the Nemesis and the White Death. That's a lot, right? 2.2. And Attack 50 is even stronger. Attack 50 is at 2.4. So anyways, I'm not going to run the regular anymore, but it works for sure. I think that would just be the only change. And you could even run Attack 50 with this setup, even without the regular. Attack 50 is basically a better Nemesis at what we're doing because... Um, the attack 50 is way easier to, to know to point blank. The scope is uh, less zoomed in. I think it's 12x. And uh, what is this one? Uh, what are we looking at here? The, this one's 12 too. For some reason, it's just different. I don't know. Maybe it's just... I don't know why. The attack 50 is also 12, right? But the attack 50 is more zoomed out. I don't know why. Oh, you got game over? Yeah, then we roll with game over. I think that'd be better. I don't think we need a healer. I, I, I prefer, personally, I prefer not to run a healer. First of all, our skills are going to eat all the heals. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ever notice that? The skills, the turrets are taking all the aggro and they start sucking up the heals. 
But also because we got our own level of heals going, like it's just. I feel like we're pretty good there. But also, uh, skill damage support builds are good too. If you want to uh, go support, not you don't have to at all. But like, if that's your gig, uh, there's also, um, like oxy builds. Oh what? Ahead. Oh, it didn't feel good to him, did it? Where are they at? Downstairs, upstairs? Look at everywhere is where they are. The boss. Hey, boss. Enough time to put two shots at a boss. That's good. Really? Hold still. Cheese. Jeez. <laughs> oh, another red guy. These guys. Okay, I'm just gonna shoot him in the butt. And get it over with. Oh no! Fucking missed it. That was my head. Shooting at me? Ah, oh, I just killed him with the rifle. That does get me killed, man. I'm not gonna. Oh my! Uh, my decoy didn't drop. I thought it did back there. Now I drop it and don't need it. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Let's hold this guy steady. Kills of these. I could see that's that Swain is that uh, non that no sharpshooter thing. It still works though, but you just I can I can see it now. It's just a little sway. The weapon that's not normally there, but you're close enough that most of the time where it doesn't really matter, and then. The truth is, is also that once Headhunter kicks in, it tightens up your, um, your handling. Doesn't say that, of course. It's, uh, it's unofficial. But. Now he's gonna start shooting at me, he always does.
this guy for some reason gets out of it before the others do. So I'm gonna go back and cover. So what I should have done is um, instead of killing all of his allies, I should have kept one alive, hit him, and then used the other one to kill him. But that's all right. As long as you got the right phone, it all works out. <clears throat> like you can hip fire if that's what you mean MSB I um call a pop shot I pop shot you could definitely do that I know scope pop shot is easier but yeah that some people are like to the degree that I see it like in Battlefield, no, nothing close. I mean, that's sh shit on Battlefield I see. I mean, he's this fast. On targets very far away, and I was just like, wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm impressed. I think you can get there with enough practice, though, probably. But, I mean, there's more to it, though. I think there's some a lot of settings, right? Like, how wide is your view? You know, all those things. Camera speed and all that other shit that's involved. Why can't I fast travel? There we go. <coughs> yeah, Illus Decoy could be kind of cool. That could be really cool. And draw them all in and just... Because once we know like what's where all the spawn points are and who comes out of what door, how many waves, how many the dealing with the warhounds can be really good too. Because there's well, that's what I noticed. I noticed there's a lot of warhounds. It seemed like there was. It seemed like there's more warhounds, and that that's kind of annoying. Oh, like right there. I didn't see that guy. I'll just shoot him in the leg. <laughs> so like a tech strategy wouldn't be bad either. Because I think the drone operators, like we could probably take care of them. Grenadiers, you know, send our drones at them. But boy, those fucking warhounds, they could take too much of your attention. You know, just like Roosevelt, that those first two warhounds. They run around for a long time before we kind of finally get around to killing them, right? And like during that time, they can, they could cause a lot of havoc, depending on what we're up against in, in total. Oh fuck, that was bad. Wanna get the party started, bro? I'm ready. Oh, really? Fuck. Somebody's got a shot at me. Fuck. Just wasted that. That rifle was coming back, though. You watch it out, how fast it is? It's actually a good test. My phone saved my life. Because I fucked it up pretty bad. Turret mania. Look at these things. Jesus. Jesus. 
God damn it. Apparently, I don't know how to switch out a right phone. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, you can fuck up. Like, there's a lot of... There are mechanics. Right? And that happens to me a lot right there. Like, where I'm switching to the Nemesis on, and then I accidentally overswitch. It's, it's easy, but sometimes you can confuse yourself and then you gotta get out of it. You just gotta hit the right bumper, not Y. And sometimes I'm just such, such a habit of hitting Y. Just gotta hit the bumper. Just stuff. Just to be safe, I'm gonna use a nemesis because you don't know. Like if I accidentally hit him on the chest or something, you know. Ah, oh, I should have fucking riot phoned him. Damn it, we were on a roll. Yeah, at some point I look forward, uh, Div, to using our strikers or heartbreaker or our blitz strategy again. I look forward to doing that once we figure out, once we know our control points. So that's how I figure we start with our skill builds, uh, learn the checkpoints is what I mean. Learn the checkpoints and then um, Oh my god. Right from glitches are not things that I like. Not in top 10 awesome things list for sure. God damn it. Oh my god, I'm stuck in some sort of rifle. Oh, what happened? I am seeing that, uh, that skill haste help us all. I don't know if it's required though, but I am seeing there was a couple instances, right? Maybe we play it in the half. Take away just a little bit of it. But I don't think we need any more headshot damage, do we? Because that's what we replaced it with. I could add back a skill tier. We took off a skill tier. There's 38 million right there. I mean, do we need 38 million in damage? Oh, let's still real quick. Use you. 17 million. Rogue. Good timing, Rogue. Throughout a turret. Ooh, I'm fucking blind? God damn. Shouldn't have done that, bro. Now I got a clean shot on you.
I realize I can just use the the rifle would be better just so you know faster I get more shots out but Nemesis is just more fun isn't it <laughs> Fox the repairs no Xena with skill damage. That's not bad. Explosive resistance. I like. I'm trying to find some good explosive resistance pieces right now. Yeah, so from what I've seen and, you know, just some random gameplay footage of, like, the end of Tidal Basin, like... They made those uh, tech boxes, you know, the weak points you have to take out on the radars or whatever they are. God, they made those look real fucking tanky, man. Seeing these guys like spend like a half hour trying to shoot them. <laughs> it's like, and I don't know if the oxidizer works on it like it used to, but. I realize the strategy might be to just leave it for the end and kill everybody and then take out those weak points, but. They make the enemies look harder than they are because otherwise the enemies that are coming out are just your typical shit. It's like, God, it does, that part doesn't look hard to me unless they turned them up somehow, you know? And so I, that's why it's really hard to tell. I just don't, I just, maybe these guys are good at legendary or maybe they're not. You don't really know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But are they making it look harder than it is, you know? So let me put on, see, I think I'd rather, the question is if I put on one more skill tier, do I, uh, and then get rid of one of these skill haste. Gotta look at more of these guys. I don't want to fight these guys. That extra skill haste has been helping me, but I'm wondering if I get rid of just one of them, which I'll do. So this is what I can do. I'm just gonna take off one of these and then see if I can feel the difference of that riot foam, right? Peel back a little bit. Cause the question is like, so we got away without the extra headshot damage, you see? Like, so then we start putting on something like protection from elites and then start really mixing up this build, which we'll be able to do. Like it's, it's gonna start becoming a perfect fucking rainbow, right? And, and I do find like the the rainbow builds really are the funnest builds for me the most fun you know the the memento is a perfect rainbow and that's why it's so great right perfectly balanced the hunter's fury is a perfect rainbow I don't know maybe it's a little lopsided but it's a strong rainbow I say it's lopsided because you get that amp damage twice right 20 percent amp damage and then you get the stacks on kill see that sway that sway is the loss of sharpshooter but we could deal with it because we're point blank point blank i, I feel like the, the long range is uh a nice to have but remember we are running uh, hunter's fury so that's what's cool is it's like god you're lethal at long range and you're lethal at short range but the reality is is that it's a inside 15 game to get your full benefits it's at 15 meters that is Oh, really? 
He's gonna try to walk sideways on me, so I had to eliminate him. That's why that extra foam is really handy. <laughs> that was luck I landed that, because I don't know what I was doing, swinging my barrel left and right. Where are these guys? Are downstairs, upstairs? Okay. I'm hunting. Fucking hear footsteps. Nemesis, just because I can, not because I want to. And I reloaded. It's a horrible spot for a turret. No, it's good to pull out the nemesis on the bosses too because it's some, they, a lot of them will take uh, two shots and that's going to allow you to... Ah, uh, damn it, I was unloading. Fuck. Again. It's not the first time that's happened. So what happens is I'll switch to my nemesis and it doesn't start stacking. It just there's no loading on it. on this guy. So I gotta shoot him in the feet because if I hit him in the body, he's gonna take my... He's gonna steal my shit. Really? The rifle right didn't stick to anybody. I'll let him break it. Out of pistols.
Oh, nice grenade. No dodging that one, apparently. Is in cover? Tough. Really? Fucking right on your body. Thank you. Oh my god. Fuck that up big time. I don't know how the right phone doesn't catch these guys sometimes, but it's really annoying. Fucking A. Really fuck that up big time. I go too fast sometimes. It doesn't switch weapons. It's weird. It shouldn't be too fast. But it is. It has a little bit something to do with the elite controller. I think the elite controller could be a little bit too fast for the game. That's why that um, Nemesis doesn't charge sometimes. It's the elite controllers. I got the sensitivity uh, nice and high on it, so. But I think it, the game doesn't pick up on those quick moves sometimes. Incoming hostiles detected. Yeah, I mean, nasty if that happens to speed run. If that happened in a speed run where you hit them and that they walk right through that fucking rifle. It's annoying. Or your right phone doesn't uh, glitches all together. That's the worst. Sit there blinking at you, right? I feel like right phone is a big f you to these guys because they use it so much. They're constantly throwing these right phone dudes at you. Where the hell? So you didn't charge it there again? Fuck. Oh, you were probably talking about that too. Yeah, for sure. Like, you have to, on legendary speedruns, you try to one shot that boss at the end, and your gun isn't charging, and you only got a split second to land that shot. Yeah, that's the worst. Well, that was a body shot. I rushed it. Did 
35 million. I mean, that's definitely not top number, right? You can get basically without the Achilles pulse about 60 million with the nemesis nemesis. If you're playing all into it, you know, a solo in a group, of course, you can get crazy higher. But considering we got, you know, this red scale blue core thing going and I'm about to add back that other skill tier that's happening next. Gonna now try the same configuration with the skill tier back. Yeah, I do. I think I, I'm not a big fan of the Scorpio at all. Actually, I, don't, I haven't used it in ages. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely handy. Like if you want to skip, it's kind of like the riot foam thing that I'm doing now. Like, like the, 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 the reason why I'm running the riot foam is like, it's almost out of a frustration in the game. And, uh, I mean, I love headshot builds and I can go days running headshot builds and I could, you know, whatever, but there's bullshit in the game. Like how many cartwheels they do. And it's just like, you know what I mean? It's just like, or the sideways walking thing and how they can go really slow. And for some reason you miss every shot, blah, blah, blah. There's all, all these little annoying things in the game. How many riot foam guys they send at you? And my riot foam is better than your riot foam, right? I can hit them with the riot foam before they can hit me with their riot foam. And so I'm faster on the trigger with it, right? So it's just like, and so, and so it's so that having a status effect again it does eliminate some of the annoyances i guess is my point right where and the scorpio can do that too like when you're when you're fighting hunters for example you can electrocute them and keep them from healing hold them still whatever but otherwise i do believe it's a crutch of a weapon like i I'm just like well why don't you just kill them and, instead of shocking them right like why don't we just do that <laughs> you know it's just But it definitely helps. But so outside of hunters, okay, so outside of hunters, so for hunters, you're like, okay, I can see that, you know, good use case, great use case, actually. And same thing with like aggro at the end. If somebody's running a riot foam at the end of District Union Arena and somebody's running um, that shotgun, it's really helpful in case that guy runs out of riot foam, right? The shotgun can disrupt, or it also helps prevent the running out of riot foam. So there's good cases for it there. But again, limited, you know, boss situation but like in regular in regular gameplay it's just like just kill him let's not shock him let's not <laughs> disorientate him let's just fucking kill him you know what i mean and this same shotgun the 612 does great you know does great like i run furious mop builds like if you don't need a 10 percent armor on kill then just run the regular 612 put damage on it something damage capable and you know just eliminate the target faster you know and so yeah and reaper says he only uses his in the status build and me too actually so when i run the the uh, scorpio it's usually for status effect builds like where it's just one addition to the status effect. it just makes sense right like uh, the nightcrawler build if you guys all saw that one where i hacked an eclipse build into this status effect weapon damage build it didn't really require skills so i play into the status effects but when people throw it on a dps build it's kind of it's kind of it's fine but it's kind of annoying to me especially when you see seven guys running scorpio it's just like oh geez it's like let's just kill them guys let's just kill them <laughs> you know it's a strong weapon it's got a strong base weapon damage you get seven shots on that target and you get the 20 percent weapon i get it you know um, and it makes sense the double down thing like okay you know there's those are all plays and so it's it's part of a bigger strategy there that's fine but for everybody else and every general dps situation and control points and you know and those things right it's just like it's just it's a little too much on the status effects it's it's just it's let's just kill them <laughs> you know so take the same shotgun and then you know roll on 
damage modifiers and let's get to work or like hey, go for the m870 right now the m870 is a little bit different i get that so because you have to um you gotta land your, you be good at landing shots but the part that's the worst part of about the scorpio is when you see people taking it basically uh over i don't know 50 meters or whatever god damn it i forgot that these these starters are going to be a little bit slower to kill they should you know you know what i'm saying like they're using that at long ranges that's the worst thing that's the number one that's the reason why i get most annoyed by it it's because they're not just using it it's, it's not just being used it's being used at really ridiculous ranges. It's like, it's not, it's not, you're not even, they're sniping with it, you know? And then, so what ends up happening is they're like, chugga, 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 reload, chugga, 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 reload. You're not, so it's not even being used right. It's being used at like long ranges, you know? It's like, there's still an, it still has an optimal range. Right, and they're, but the reason why uh, they're doing that is because the status effects can still be applied at long ranges, right? But it's just like, a, like it's like, well, let him get here inside optimal range. Let him in, let him in. Let's not shock him thirty times before they get here. Let him in, and then let's just kill him. Now that they're in optimal range, you know, now shock him, now shock him and shoot him to death, you know. Now you're doing some damage too, at least, you know. But that M870, I don't know if you've used that bad boy, but that's a beast. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Scorpio because, uh... And there are situations where it's the only gun to run, or the best gun to run, right? Like, for sure. Okay, I think we got this Grenadier again. Surprise, surprise. timed out damn it i don't know how give me that backpack there it is is that it no that's not it i'll just take a shot Oh, he's fucking with me. So shit. That's a shit. I don't like. That's the bullshit I'm trying to cut out. <laughs> right there, right? And then you don't need any accuracy with the Scorpio too. So you know, but the whole accuracy dilemma is again a sort of part of practice, isn't it? So the Scorpio is preventing you from getting the accuracy because it, it's never going to require. It. So you got to like. You gotta still get your accuracy practice in. It's also to me, it's it's the truth be told, it's just also just not a fun gun, you know. It's just that chuck 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 isn't very fun. But, uh. but if you got so much damage already on your build that, like, why not shock them? Then I see the logic there too. So the you know, again, arguments that can be brought in for the Scorpio, case by case. Uh, there's another squad of these dudes. That's good, though. We want those... Uh, what do you call them? Convoys? It's another elite. Damn, they keep giving us those. They didn't give that to me as a headshot? It didn't. You fuckers. Uh, 
And that's not a very good barrier, apparently. Alright, we're loaded. Guys are gonna run down the block. Come here. Incoming hostiles detected. I must be the worst right farmer in the world, I think. Because <laughs> the fact that they didn't fucking land is very frustrating. I shot two right as they were coming out. They're also really fast, I get that, but they look. Right in front of the door. My timing is good. Oh, and I just glitched. Great. 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 Hold still, buddy. What? Guy's always a pain, huh? Always you. Detecting additional hostile contacts. Oh, and it glitched. Wow. Good timing. Oh, and it glitched again. So why have fucking <laughs> skill haste if it's gonna glitch on you, right? Fucking dumb. turn huh oh that one was out of range We're alive though. But there's so much wasted rifle right in that little situation. And I gave myself an extra skill tier, so that's the crazy shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I added a skill tier. of groups is over there. Let's go that way. What? Shit. Right for myself. God damn it. God damn it. Yeah, that was a mess. I should have broke it, but... These guys are not going to come and get me, are they? Well, the problem is the decoy is the most reliable skill that I have. The firefly does the same thing. Glitches out. You throw it out in a little bust sometimes. Or gray out on you. So the decoy is... You actually saves me more than a rifle does. Like when I get in real trouble, that decoy is nice. That's frustrating. That was fresh and that was a good fight.
Yeah, it was a good fight. That sucks. We don't need XP, but I like the all the gear on the ground when we're done with that. So we're 91. All right. So we're about to go to 90 here. You see that? So I need three kills in 90 and then 100 kills above that to take 89. So 103 kills away. Yay. Mr. Impeller, though, he's on the move. He saw us coming. He must watch the streams. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, the the weapon core is interesting though. The way this that working out, I. Th so we had, before we had the weapon core, and another skill haste here. But I don't think the protection from elites is adding anything. So I'm gonna take that back. A little more protection from elites. So I, I I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to uh, skill haste. Now we got tons of skill shit here. Might be off balance. But, um, I guess go some chest too. I mean, there's, there's a, I could put the weapon handling back there. Like we originally had it. Of course, that would, a little bit of weapon handling does help. It helps you land more shots faster. Yeah, Div, I like, I actually, the blood, the firefly is one of my favorite skills in the game. I think it's amazing, but if I get frustrated with the riot foam and then <laughs> yeah just like we know and then that stupid firefly starts glitching out on you i'm like great great now i have no skills great you know it's like jesus i'm gonna start off a little deeper because we're starting cold oh look they're already coming here we go they're good at doing this to you huh I think after that decoy, right? <laughs> Speaking of skills. And you get a kill, and you get a headshot kill, and you get a headshot kill, and you get a headshot kill. Hang out there for a minute. There Somebody on the left there. Oh, there they are. Oh, the right foam stole it again. God damn it. <laughs> they look fucking with me, don't they? Oh, dizzy as fuck. Dizzy from the fire. Oh, what? Oh. Can I do it? I don't think I can thread that needle. He's pretty small. I know what you're doing. 
Don't play stupid with me. You remember the Joker's brothers from Friday to part two? Don't play stupid with me. <laughs> I watched a little bit of uh, Friday part one the other day. Just a little bit of it. Good shit, man. A movie, man. Debo. I had a friend in college I used to call Debo. He's big like that. Another resource convoy. God damn it. That is not cover apparently. in the back there by something hard. Come on, get me up, buddy. Get me up. Fuck. And then a lot in the forward position, too. That's a little bit of a fight. Come on, get down, dude. Got time to be reloading. Oh my god. She went right through that foam. They're way back there. These guys are like two city blocks away. Uh, cutting it way down there. And that wasn't a headshot.
Oh, that's exactly where I was about to go. I guess I'll heal up. That didn't count as a headshot. <laughs> the little foot that was right on the fucking head. I don't even know what to tell you. And she's shooting me through that metal container. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, there's all sorts of crazy stuff happening right now. The unexplained. It's like the X Files. Oh, that didn't launch. Shoot, just shot around the corner. It's gonna get me that kind of shit's gonna get me killed, man. This guy, look at him right there. Not helping. Not being very helpful. Come on, buddy. Who are you shooting at? Somebody behind you. Somewhere. Who's that shooting at you? I gotta take care of that guy. them down those heavy gunners they keep sending out you are pretty annoying to fight it's heavy old helmets some fun right there. <laughs> you getting the same two gear pieces over and over? Like, just regular farming? I don't know how this gun's still alive, but... There's a medic back here staying busy. done supply room access unlocked
We're so close now. I got to keep checking. So let's see. Hedgehog goes. We're at 90, one slot. So, ooh, we're really close. So 89 is 50 kills away. 50, that's one control point. Okay. Tough call here, though, with the build I'm at. I'm at crossroads. I think basically, I think probably the better way to go would be to put back on that one weapon handling. I think that a little bit probably helps. It helps a little bit with your reloads. It helps a little bit with your this and that. Um, yeah, I'm also contemplating a sharpshooter right now too because... Um, the TAC-50 is stronger and faster. It does rely on special ammo. But you also get headshot damage and stability. The headshot damage is not that much though, right? It's actually not that much. So it's not a big miss there either. So the downside of going with the tech 50 is like, you know, there's the possibility of running out of ammo where the nemesis never runs out. So the tech 50 is easier for people though. It's just like, there's no charging. You just, it's actually not as zoomed in. So it's definitely easier. It's just that technician, besides the skill tier, technician isn't bringing any additional value to the build. Or at least sharpshooter is bringing two stats instead of just one. Who's shooting at me over here? Where are you? There you are. Let's kill him with the right bomb.
<laughs> right behind that car, huh? Oh, what? Do you have, uh, because of the summertime, it gets so hot in my office. And now I'm running an AC too. I'll actually start as soon as the weather cools down again. Which is uh, here, around here, where I'm at in Portland. It should happen in the next week or a couple weeks. Definitely before the end of the month. Oh, God. Yeah, I prefer to use the face cam, though. I like it. Oh, you fucking lady. How? <laughs> I don't get how some of these are not headshots, you know what I mean? It's like, how the hell? I was like, perfect. And I was fully loaded on that bad boy. I'm just complaining. I might, uh, I might keep the same configure. I'm just kind of thinking about preference here. I might keep the same configuration and then just add back on sh sharpshooter. I'm really torn, you know, or keep this. I think that's a big question. You know, I use the same configuration with sharpshooter or same configuration at a red core what brings more value here you know and i'm still thinking about it. it's not so much i still use the um i think i'd still use the nemesis in either case Even though ammo is not usually an issue with the TAC-15, we're not using Nemesis uh, enough to... But, like, these situations here, like, when you see us, like, killing multiple guys pretty quickly... Without the help of the TAC-50, without the help of the... Um... Sharpshooter, really? So I'm thinking, like, what if we had sharpshooter, weapon core, and then this, uh, the skill haste, you know, instead of the skill tier. I think that might be a... We dropped two skill tiers in that scenario. That might be too much. That might be too aggressive.
Gotta check that configuration, see if it works better. If I like sharpshooter back, I've been running this without sharpshooter for a long time now. So now I think I like to go full circle, put back on sharpshooter and say, hey, how does it feel now? Do I do I like sharpshooter better now that I've ran without it for so long? Then put it back on and be like, did I miss it? Sometimes you miss it. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, I do like it better. And sometimes these builds get so, like you can go in so many different directions. It's a really tough choice. I think the one thing, there's one thing that could be fixed about the build is like, there's those cases where I've just put out maybe like one too many shots. There's like one too many shots on that occasional boss. So I want to fix that. I want to fix that. That one extra shot, I want to stop putting that one out. That's an easy fix. But then outside of that, it's like, it could, could uh, just go into Sharpshooter alone fix that because Sharpshooter brings in a little bit more headshot damage or is it just a weapon core? You know, after a while, it's not an issue, but it's when you lose your buff and when you don't have any buffs, that's basically when it's happening. When I have no Hunter's Fury buffs, I have no Headhunter buff. I'm putting out extra shots. Any of the specialized grenades at this build? Um, Jesus. Probably none of them, bro. That's Casey. Because the blind one, I mean, it'd probably stay with the blind one, but the, the fire one, they start waving their arms around, and then that makes it harder to get headshots. The riot foam, I guess, is okay, but I already got riot foam. Um, the firewall ones, uh, you know, the, the explosive thingies, you know, maybe, maybe, but I guess the blinder would be the best. It's got a big circle on that blinder. Yeah, I'm not getting, you know, anything exciting <clears throat> in loot either. Tap or dip. It's kind of random crap. It's just all random. I haven't seen one good thing out of it. And, and this is a lot of gear. We're getting a lot of gear. If you think about all of this, we're, I'm getting headshot. XP proficiencies are coming in pretty quickly. <clears throat> it's kind of just like, uh, I don't remember one thing that I've kept. And I've deleted so much. So I mean, not that I'm looking for anything, but I am. I am, you know, always looking for something, you know. <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm I'm looking for some good R and K pieces. I could always like use a good backpack. Did the map change? Nope. Yeah. So we still got backpacks down here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is. Leave this like it is, and I'm just gonna put on sharpshooter now, and then not change anything else, and then be like, I like that better now that I've fine tuned this build this way. So sharpshooter is gonna give us the breathe control, stability, right? Recoil, fast area, that helps, believe it or not, right? 
<clears throat> but we were doing okay without it. But that might save us from a shot here and there, right? And then 50% uh, headshot damage, which is not a ton. 15% is sort of like, you know. So, but maybe that's enough, right? So let's just, let's just activate that. So we'll run just like control point or two with it that. And then what I'll do is uh, then remove the one skill tier, bring it down to two, but <clears throat> keep the skill haste up. All right, let's try that real quick. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be able to mix and match the specialization stuff eventually. But apparently not anytime soon. So we got the TAC-50. Get that medic. Come on, guy. Give me that. Give me that. Oh. Got him. 28 million there. Oh, double turrets coming down. You see that? Nasty. Do that right from reinforcement complete. So this is when we pull out the TAC-50. See how easy that was with the TAC-50? Right from, see did I get him? No. That time I did. No, Nemesis that shit.
<laughs> they don't want to get that one to me. All right. All right. She didn't take that dizzy spell either. bad guys out there Oops, that's not what I wanted I'm rotating all the weapons here Just trying to fill them out with the stability There's an argument if you have the extra stability, you also can use the rifle less. Because you're killing faster, less shots, that kind of shit. Really? You can see me, but I can't see you, huh? All right. Everything's a little bit easier with sharpshooter. Technically, I don't need it, but I'm doing it anyways, just for timing reasons. Switch and attack 50. Attack rate doesn't work as well as bosses, right? Good reason to keep the nemesis around. Nope, nemesis. I mean, I could have just stayed with the rifle there, but I'm, I'm testing the like this, the weapon swapping and target acquisition and trying to cycle all the weapons. Because what I'm trying to evaluate is like if your aim is better, if your target acquisition is faster, you could use there, you could use less riot foam, right? That's kind of the argument. And of course, we started with this this specialization, and he uh, basically evolved to taking it off. <clears throat> so by reversing it, I'm just again testing to see whether it's better to go with this or not. But we obviously less it. A very long time without it. And so I'm also thinking about, well, maybe uh, am I better off instead with though just a weapon handling instead of the target acquisition, the stability stuff? Or because at least weapon handling is giving you also reload speed.
I can't say though. I already noticed I was putting out less shots. <clears throat> I was putting out less shots. Let's see if that's still the case. No, I'm not going to pull into tech 50 here. No tech 50. So can I pull in less shots without using the tech 50? Let's see here. So there's a there's one up right there. Oh, we got, forgot to hit this. The fucking turret was shooting right around the corner there, wasn't it? Whoops, no, this one. I knew there was a guy behind me. Bunch of guys out there, huh? Taking damage is making it hard to get that shot. <clears throat> I need them to come in. A turret behind him. Well, let's just go around. Fucking guy.
plenty of rat foam <clears throat> or enough so we haven't run out yet I think that's that's that skill efficiency off that backpack really helps that up man there it is thank god for the right phone it's over over swapping weapons it's just xbox bullshit oh It's actually a really good point, Deja. The swap speed. It'd be kind of cool also to just think about the swap. You know, you mentioned like to actually somehow integrate the pistol better, you know, so instead of reloading the rifle, you know, switching to being regular, more regular about the pistol because <clears throat> the pistol can one shot too. I should think about that and make this build more wholesome. Attack 50 would have been smarter there. You shot through both of them. Oh, fucking grenadier. Fucking guy. Oh, they're shooting around corners. Of course they are. Look at that. That guy had an angle on me. Oh, that's going to be painful, isn't it? <laughs> we gotta get rid of that grenadier. He's the one. Oh, 
technically the grenadiers also because they'll throw fire grenades back here so but i can't fucking get a shot on you i can't use the rifle because it'll accidentally kill him and then i lose my headshot buffs fucking dumb huh That weak boy. Now he's really pissed. Here, hold on there. Make sure we go to this. Oops. See, over swap, over swap to the wrong weapon. When you use all of your weapons, it gets a little confusing. Like, wait, which one am I going to? <laughs> Leap patrol down. That was a tough little spot, but we got out of it. I think the diversity of weapons definitely helps, right? Ah, killed her. Hold still, Sergeant. Nice, 20 million. So we got the power. Of course you do. Those head it's those Hunter's Fury stacks, right? Like with the Hunter's Fury stacks, it doesn't matter if we're running technician or not. Like we can go back to technician when you have all those. I think I lost the headshot buff, but I can't tell. I should have had that. God damn it. Civilians in distress. The head matters. You want that headshot, right? You reset everything if you don't. Fuck that up. Should have just gone in. That's that's the advantage right there. 
Uh, yep, 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 yep. It's got me killed. So the specialization is so slow. That's why you want the nemesis. <clears throat> Gotta keep that in mind. The attack 50, this weapon swapping is too fast to do what we're doing with the nemesis. Too slow to do what we're doing with the nemesis. Okay. Now that we know. See that? Fuck. I don't even know what weapon I have now. Okay, we're back. Come on, dude. I'm loading up for the boss. That's what I'm doing. Look at his legs were on the ground. Still two shots. Wow, that was 20 men. This guy is so tinky. <laughs> so one to break the helmet, two to kill. That wasn't bad. Hmm, that makes it tough. So the TAC-50 is just too slow to move that fast. Tough, tough, tough. Oh, you got the Deja. You got the power of the mouse. <laughs> Says uh, I bound my mouse up. Weapon slot one. Mouse wheel down. Oh, that must be fast and nice. Yeah, for me it's Y. I got to hold Y, tap Y, or triple hold, triple tap for the weapon. So I don't even know. Actually, it just it just happens. But it definitely goes the wrong way too a lot. So. It, well, part of the problem is that for me is that the, uh, you know, the TAC-50 looks like the uh, the Nemesis. And so I'll switch to that. think I got the right gun and I'll sit there with it. I'm like, oh, no, that's not the right one. That's part of my problem here. <clears throat> Either way. So I did definitely feel the weapon handling benefits from having Sharpshooter. But... Uh, the TAC-50 is not going to be as useful as I want it to be just because the whole it's slow animation. I might as well not use it. So yeah, that settles it. So I think I go back to, this is what I'm thinking. So I go back to technician. Put on that one, put on, put back on that one weapon handling on the chest. So we have at least one there that'll help uh, with everything, swapping, reload, all that shit. And then, uh, and then I'm thinking, put on a red core on the mask. That should, be, and I think we're in balance. Where are you from, Deja? Part of the planet are you from? OK. 
Okay, so we're gonna go here. Oops, here. Oops, no, I didn't wanna do that. Put that back. Australia, right on. Yeah, we are rarely on at the same time then, huh? I'll catch some Australians at crazy hours. A lot of Australians on my channel. I follow, follow along. A lot of Australians play this game. I think it's up there like top five Australia, maybe even number three. It's uh, US, obviously US, Canada, UK. Um, Germany is up there and I think Australia plays more than Germany. So I think the top countries. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. We got some of our clans are full of Australians. It might as well be Australian clans. I think it's, uh, I think that's PC. Or no, maybe it's PlayStation. I think it's one of our PlayStation clans. It's like, got a lot. And, it's, and it was all coincidence. It wasn't planned that way. <laughs> it's all turned out that a lot of, lot of Australians joined at the same time, got into the same clan. Okay, so we needed to change. Uh, I think we're going to put this to a red core. So we got... The mask here. And then I put this chest. Uh, I'm, um, actually, let me see. I think I might have a better chest now. Now that we know. Yeah, that one. Bama, Bama has heels. Nail bunny. I'm nail bunny. Have you been here the whole time? Oops, skis has joined. Oops. What up, oops. All right. So then we had a couple of skill haste mods. You guys are just not joining us. This build is a ton of fun. Have fun with it. I've been like going crazy with uh, the balancing act here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you like workshopping. I love workshopping. I, that is my favorite part of the game, actually. I can do this. I do this, a lot of this. And, you know, some builds are just like, okay, I think we got it. You know, they're really easy. But some of these are like so good. It's like, okay, I want to get it perfectly in balance. Like we got the perfect amount of headshot damage, the perfect amount, of, you know. And I think they're, they're, harder, they're the harder builds to make, don't you think, right? They're the... Um, what do we call them? The off the off meta builds or the hybrids. This is a hybrid. Basically, that's the better way to describe them. The hybrids are the hardest builds to make because you're balancing things and you got to get it. To, you know, if you don't get it right, it'll get you killed. Right? That's basically it. You, if you see yourself dying a lot, you got to like, well, what what's killing me here? What's killing me? And then, oh, let's go to this control point first. Got that. You go. What's killing me? And then, morning. Oops. And then you play, then you, you go back to the lab, fix that, right? See, is that enough? Is that enough? But it does keep me from multiplayer a lot. <clears throat> and so that's the problem is that that's the downside. The downside is that the workshop be like, I don't like to play a multiplayer when I'm doing this because there's too many variables. What is my team running? Are they buffing me? Uh, you know, if I'm having to protect my team or pick them up or whatever, then that that makes it difficult to test the build or or if I'm trying to kill people and they, they, they shoot the enemy, I'm shooting. So it weakens the enemy. So I have a hard time assessing my time to kill. You know, so I... Uh, oh, but most importantly, I'm jumping in and out. Uh, going back to the White House. I need to go back to the White House a lot, as you see, to, to, to change things. And 
that can be annoying on a team, right? Because you're basically abandoning them. So I prefer to do workshops uh, solo, but then some of these could take a whole week if you really like it. If you really like the build. You're like, I need to run it all week. Figure out if I love it. My buddy. God damn it. There it is. Ah. Uh. God damn it. So yeah, truly the one of the most difficult things about this build is the is the riot foam glitch. Because I have to slow down on that riot foam to make sure I don't hit their body with it. If I do, then I, it fucks up a lot of things that make this build great. Which is a one-shot kill capability. It breaks that chain effect. Why didn't he fucking oh my god he didn't stagger ah jump dude two out of three staggered guess that's what we can hope for oh he didn't take the right from wow Jesus, I just added more damage to the building. It's like acting like funny. <clears throat> Come on, guys. Get up here. I called you an hour ago. Never mind. They're busy. Yeah, I think this started as a Hunter's Fury build. Uh, yeah, it did. It did. We started with White Death, and then I decided, um, I don't know how we got here, though, actually. I think about it. Whoop. Somebody back here, I guess, or not. Okay. We were running uh, like, um, God damn, what the fuck? We're all of a sudden getting our ass kicked. It's basically uh, a point blank. It's a point blank headshot build and even the nemesis point blanks. We were doing a lot of fine tuning, and so I just kind of reversed a lot of that fine tuning. So here's an example of what we're trying to do here. So you can point blank with the nemesis. You have all the time in the world to do it, but using your nemesis to charge up, basically, right? Just you could point blank on these guys, which sounds crazy. I know. But it's even easier with the TAC-50. It says that the only reason why I'm not doing the TAC-50 is because the TAC-50's got a slower animation when you switch in and out of that weapon. The Nemesis has a charge up, so it's sort of a trade-off, but... 
It's pretty funny. It's basically that's the that's what the build is. You know how you like that's what it's playing off of. It's it's a it's a crossover from a couple of concepts. So one of them is like it's just a, a sniper build, and with one of the with these sniper builds, it's a no scope. It started with a no scope sniper build. Of course, it's it's rifle nemesis combo, but. You know how you use your TAC-50 as kind of like a shortcut for a headhunter? And you would like get that that going right there, just like that. And then, and so I do that a lot as a shortcut, right? And then I realized, uh, so we started playing into that with the riot foam. Blind as fuck. And then, and, uh, you know, it was a no-scope uh, white death at first, but then I decided to go for the rifle because uh, it, it, the white death no-scope is, is hard for people to learn to um, learn how to no-scope with it. So we turned this into a, <laughs> a face, a, uh, what do you call it? A point-blank nemesis build, which is crazy. And then, oh my god, but there's these glitches like that. He just ran right through my riot foam. Those will get you killed. Fuck, so once you got your procs all going, like you see here, then you're just full buff. You're full buff. You just one shot and everything. And so part of the, the riot foam was just to cut down on the bullshit. You know, this game's got a lot of bullshit where they're like doing cartwheels and... You know, that kind of shit. And it's just like, let's just cut out the bullshit. So he was about to go run around and do a cartwheel. And so we got the double status effects, right? And then that buys you time to do that. And then I could switch to my nemesis and one shot him in the face. Or one, almost one shot him in the face, apparently. And that's the part where fine tuning does little things like that. Like, oh wow, he was basically dead. Bama, I have a couple of them. Um, you might be thinking Slaughter. It's got 20% armor on kill. And then I got the other one that's called the Furious Mop. That's got the high uh, armor on kill. It's using the um, two-piece system corruption. All right, here we go. God damn it. Reload. I hit the reload button. God damn, little things like that are killing me. Oh, and then I miss it. Oh, okay, I don't get it. It's getting, maybe it's the witchy now, right? That's what I call it. When everything starts to feel like it's going wrong on you, maybe it's not the game. Maybe it's like right here, I'm reloading. And why? Oh, it's because I'm on the fucking right phone and I switched out of it and it didn't look like it did. Okay. I hate fighting these uh, these guys, but I'm just gonna break that shit so he stops shooting at us. That bullshit, that's the bullshit they were about to I'm telling you about right they were about the cartwheel and stuff you could just eliminate the bullshit everything goes a little bit faster and smoother right so he's about to do some of that bullshit again uh, yeah I'll take this one <clears throat> and there it is I mean, that was a, an elite resource convoy, which could be tough 
and you know kind of makes it look easier right and you know there's some human error involved in there <laughs> but we pulled it off we, we stayed on our feet and so i wanted a fast-paced one shot build because i'm trying to rank up my headshots and so we started this uh on friday night and on friday night we were i was at 99 and we are now at 88 so we we had our goal so our, our goal was 89 and so um and so we're at 88 so that means today um started at blah, blah, blah. today we've gotten almost basically 800 headshot kills something like that give or take a few yesterday we had 11 1100 headshot kills it was a good day yesterday today i've been going a lot of, a lot of back and forth working on the build but we're getting there the sidewalk of death exactly so yeah cutting out that bullshit right the the walk of death <laughs> that's what i call it the side where they they want the crab walk is what i also call it the crab walk the walking sideways shit let's cut that out get you killed you know and then um the, the excessive cartwheels that they do they do a lot of excessive cartwheeling you're like come on but there's still bullshit like <clears throat> Like there's a there's some bullshit. Sometimes the, the riot phone will glitch out a lot. Like where it'll start blink it'll blink at you. Or sometimes Um they'll run right through that riot phone. And you're like, I hit him right in his freaking feet. Both feet. I hit both his feet and he ran right through it. So still you still get that. Nothing I can do about that. But, you know, you got the decoy. The decoys helps out a lot. So from here, like, and so now where I'm just, now I'm just polishing, fine tuning. So I keep adding on this uh, weapon core. And, I, you know, I, I for many times I've, I've put a skill to here, put a weapon core, put a skill to here, put a weapon core. And um, I don't feel a lot of value from that weapon core. You know, I don't. And so, okay, so I keep it going back to the skill tier. And, you know, so I'm testing, so I'm going back and forth, going like, okay, what's what's better? Uh, so we, we're one shot killing these guys, right? So we don't need a ton of duration, right? We don't need a ton of duration. So it's really, uh, it's more skill haste. You need a, you need a lot of, um, you want, you want, you always want to riot from. You don't want to run out of riot from. That's your safety net, right? It's like a safety feature. back here oh man these guys are back here too let me hide Ooh. God, they oh great another one of these guys give me that backpack oh, I didn't get the backpack but he's weakened Fuck. Oh, that's a tank. Fuck. <laughs> Jesus, now I can't land a headshot. Let's get out of here. So I can see that like a lot am I losing my depth perception is that what's happening but anyways the point is like so like I keep it's the fine-tuning this stuff because all the builds work all the variations work and so I'm having a hard time with preference it's like okay but don't you guys think that it's more important to have skill haste in the extra skill tier if we're one-shotting these guys
uh, because the skill tier will give us a little bit of duration, of course, but it also gives us an extra canister. But that doesn't help us get our our our, our riot foam back faster, right? All it does is give us an extra canister. I swear there's somebody else alive back here. Charge. God damn it. Exotic. I use a Regulus. I mean, a, uh, a D50. What else would it be, huh? Liberty, I mean. So now we're finally out of riot foam, right? But here it comes. It's about to come back. So, I mean, that's pretty good right there. And it, it, it's often going to be um, two shots on the bosses. So that the, the, that's the sacrifice in the build. Two shots on the bosses in many cases. Some cases you'll do one shot. just depends on the boss. But that's the sacrifice. But I like that. It's a good trade-off. Tusk out here. I don't like it one bit. Jesus. Can't find the bad guys. Oh, uh, now you're up there. Uh, make me run out. Time out. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed that. She's just waiting there for me. Jesus. I'm already trying to go for that headshot and he's just jiggling everywhere. You're gonna miss everything. Fuck it. I'm out of here. Yeah, Future Perfect was nice. We did that also. But it wasn't giving me skill haste. And so there, it was it was pretty cool. The problem with the Future Perfect, the one little thing is like, so when you, you had the buff, it was great. But then it'd fall off without warning, of course. And then... Uh, you know, because it times out, right? And then you might all of a sudden have no riot foam. You're like, oh, but a second ago I had a riot foam. And you're running a little bit more on confidence, and then all of a sudden you lose it. All of a sudden you don't have riot foam, you know? Because every kill was giving you an extra riot foam canister.
Oh, I fucking sniped in the back. God damn, Tusk. That was working though, right? Out of that one, or suck on that gut dude for a while. Oh, wow! There we go. Let's get out of avoiding my rap phone. Yeah, the foam loses its glue. Yeah, it's one of those things you notice and you'll start to notice you're like, wow, they're running through my right foam. It has nothing to do with the skill tiers. Six skill tier, it'll do the same thing. It's just, it's kind of like, if their animation is in motion when you shoot that right foam, then yeah, it'll, it'll give them the credit on the move. Who do we got to kill around here? Yeah, so that, 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 there's a little waviness in the gun. Just a little bit. And that's because I'm not playing with a sharpshooter. I can just feel it just a little bit. But when we're playing close up, it's not much of a deal. Until it is. Until you're dead. Yeah, so we did We did just, uh, start with Future, and I like Future. Um, we were running it on the Eclipse version of this build, right? We had Eclipse Protocol one that we've been running around with. It's actually a pretty nice one right there, isn't it? Yeah, and stare, and snare duration is status effects, Mike. Yeah, that's right. No bunny got your back there. Oops, no, 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 no. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about the missiles. by that guy you feel pretty bad about yourself when you get killed by one of those randoms huh crawling out of the gutter to shoot you uh, more Just gonna get the party started back there I guess Fuck those arrows. I should have just right from that guy and let him die by arrow.
Oh, God, there's right from behind me. That's not what we want. Oh, double right phone. Fuck you guys. There we go. Let's go boss first. Then this guy. All right. You, you. None of that, none of that. Wasting my time, bro. Killing to do. And you with your sidewise bullshit? No. Fucking there too, right? Should have used a rifle right there. He stole my headshot. Perk. It'd be cool if there was a build that gave you right from like right from on kill. Right from everybody I could kind of like eclipse, but you don't have to run a skill. Just got him or gotta do it? Okay, good. Oh, that's not what I wanted. No. So he should take one to two shots. Yeah, there's one. So that's the sacrifice of the build, is that. Bosses will take one to two shots, two often. And when you're really chain killing, it'll take one. So like when you get them at a spawn, at the spawn door, and you get your Hunter's Fury stacks. Notice I don't have the Hunter's Fury stacks. That's what was missing there. Because they cool off in 10 seconds. Yeah, like hardwired. Like somebody was just uh, Mike. Somebody was just bringing up a hardwired build the other day in in comments, and they said that they really liked it. It was a. Uh, it was like this. They ran crits all over it. I think red all over it. I think it was a, like an all red build basically, and then they were just using the hardwired to proc. Like I think he said, like a healer hive and a drone or something like that. Something like that. Kind of cool idea. I've always wanted to make a red, an all red, um, or a hybrid version of hardwired, but I just never get around to it because I end up having to delete the pieces. Because it's like stash space issues, basically. Yeah, we talked about that. In danger. The HB.
Oops, excuse me. I'm just reading your comment there about HB is too strong for a brand set. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it too strong, but I think they can. I think they can fix it. Like if they gave us, if they made it so that we didn't have to have. I would agree with you if they didn't make us have uh, a technician, basically. I, I mean, obviously you don't have to, but you really do. You know, and so I think it's weak that way. I think that's where the build lacks is it's like is like five seconds pulse isn't shit, you know? And so what ends up happening is like sometimes you can forget that the pulse ran out and you're sitting there wailing on their chest, you know? Or something like that. And then the pulse is goes cold on you. Um, and so I found like I have a heart if I don't run technician, I have inconsistent stacking on that build and so it forces me to always run technician. Otherwise I'm a, I'm an unsatisfied customer. Oh, I hit the wrong thing there. What? Oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Agent final signs, zero. It's okay. Good morning, Kingy. Good to see the other side of the world popping up. Yeah, the feedback loop is like, yeah, it's fun, but, right? Like, but, but your skills aren't strong enough, but your blah, blah, blah. So it was like, you know, it's kind of nice to see with the way he suggested it because, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's still a question. I think it's still a question. Like, oh, you're just so much waste on the build. Like, because it gives you what? Skill haste and a little bit of skill damage. God, I don't even know. I don't use that build a lot. Skill haste for sure. I think it is skill damage, but it's just not not a lot, right? It's like, blah. Like I've never even used it to make uh, like an unlimited seeker build. It just doesn't sound appealing to me. It's like okay, unlimited weak seekers. <laughs> cool, you know, not that cool actually. Yeah, they come waiting for these guys to show up here. Actually, I should fight it for down here. If there's a trap, you end up having to jump down anyways. We're just standing there, huh? Oh, you knew exactly where I was? a little too far out she's in that perfect spot you see that oh, a little bit of that oh it's an elite resource convoy jesus christ i missed a lot of shots right there i wonder that just has me going back to the like really would i have missed those if i was on a sharpshooter that was a lot of shots right there I just missed. Or sometimes it's just, you know, you're not, you're going too fast. You just need to slow up a bit, you know. Incoming hostiles detected. 
Apparently that was a fucking miss. Might be my angle too, it's kind of funny. I'm missing un uh, unusual shots that I always land. It's a lot of trophies though. Oh, what? Is that all of them? Coast clear? Oh, a turret got me. Oh, there's two convoys. There's a normal one. Or not. Yeah, that's the normal one. There's still an elite one out there somewhere. She just stole my fucking kill. Oh, my Lord. And you're still going to climb. Oh my god, it's like you're not even there. <laughs> Ghosts! Ghosts in the game, I'm sure of it. Oh, wow, you too, huh? Come on. Don't go that way. I need you over here. Oh my god, I just hit you with that. I was right on. A little foggy for me. Got him. Hold stale, buddy.
a miss, all right. That was a real miss. fucking stole it oh and they didn't arrive from oh my god stuck on something come on Still two shots, huh? All right. Nice knee, might need that one. Looks like the map just rotated, huh? Yep, strikers. Oh, jeez. Not you again. Try and catch me. Call in your friends, didn't you? Oh, crap.
Oh, I swear I was on the other run. There's a one shot right there. Is that damage coming from? Oh, they're behind us now? Where'd you guys come from? Oh, it's outcasts. Oh my god, really? Fuck you guys. Homie, don't play that. I'm gonna bring that back. I'm bringing that back. In your phone, bro. So hold on to that for me. Here you go. back right Agent in need of backup. yep That one, I guess. So we don't run out of right from any and anywhere throughout there. It's perfect balance between killing and right from me. A lot of rogues today. And you know what I love about their skills? Like, it's like, it never goes dead. They're like, they got like forever duration and shit like that. All right. They were split up, so at least there's that. 
So we got five right bombs. Technically, it's smarter to use the rifle because you can put out more shots, but it's fun, right? Oops. Oh, it's getting shot in the back. That was fun, though. Yeah, I've done I've done it with the uh, sorry. I didn't I didn't see that Deja Casey sample comment there. I've done that um, Sharpshooter tac 50 drone it does work. It does work. I Mean there are times where it's like a little inconsistent You know, but it does really work And that's because the the thing Like if you just let it hover over your shoulder it might not be pointing in the right direction sort of like catches up with you kind of rotates a little bit but um but it does work overall i think it's consistent enough it's but like what if you just want to run gunner right Nail button, you see him, man. Detected. Me too. I'm headed there. I'm right behind you. Actually, let's see where we are, by the way. Eighty-eight, and yeah, we're a long ways from eighty-seven. That's ten control points. Right on Reaper, I'm out. I'm basically bouncing too. I'm headed back to the White House. And then just kind of, I'm going to think about where I want to leave the build. It's a tough call, tough call. It, it, there is a benefit to having sharpshooter in the weapon handling department, but. I, uh, it's kind of irritating to get the TAC-50 and Nemesis confused when you're in your weapon swapping mode, you know, you're holding Y and you kind of hold Y just a little bit too long and you end up with your TAC-50 like, ah, and you think you have the Nemesis and then you go up to try to charge and it doesn't, and then you accidentally discharge a shot. So, you know, and then, uh, and then you lose your buff because of that. And then you end up like, ah, now I'm going to die because I'm in the open and I don't have any of my buffs. But other than that, the big question on the build is the skill tier. Just this one skill tier. I keep going back and forth on that. So if I'm not running the TAC-50, I feel like I, I can really survive without sharpshooter. and get the skill tier. And then...
weapon damage helps this a lot right so when it comes to trying to proc this let's just, i guess we're gonna just test it huh this is i just gotta figure this out this is so it's it's the elite it's that first kill is painful now we don't have any backpack trophies so keep that in mind but it's that first kill as you can see it's kind of a little bit painful it takes multiple shots to kill him so there's one there's two right but the good news is like when you're really starting out you don't even have to get out of cover right you're like i can play from cover the whole time just you just like when you're starting out with this build starting out like completely cold and you just like logged in it's just like you you play from cover and you just litter the field with trophies just get a shit ton of trophies and then go out there and get them and then you're out there with this thing and then you're just hitting you know there's 13 million and so on and see this is without the backpack, but basically you should be hitting it. But the nep the sniper we were hitting, I think, uh, 38 with the setup, which is obviously excessive. Full, fully procced. So there's 20 something right there. 40, there's 40 million right there. 38 again, yeah. So 40 million looks like it's the peak so 38 non-crit then then you switch to this it's obviously gonna be weaker 13 million but we're getting 40 percent armor on kill with this thing right so from there it's like you know the right foam i mean we're probably better off with The one thing we didn't check, uh, the one combination we haven't tried is getting rid of that extra armor core, but we're out of cover, so I'm pretty sure we want to hold on to that. Okay, so now let's go put on the armor that uh, yellow tier real quick and see how much damage we drop So it's two shots in the first elite In the testing range, of course, and when you get outside, it's you got a lot more variables uh, Elites have different amounts of armor, right? So two shots. Let's see if we can do it again. 7.3, basically the same damage. And the second shot, yeah. And then we're racking up those trophies. Let's go and switch. I mean, now we're racking up the uh, Hunter's Fury is what I meant. Okay, Hunter's Fury is full, so let's see what this tops out at, and it's not even going to matter. Oh, I missed that. It's, it goes so fast. 38. So it's the same damage, right? 36. 36. So it dropped a little bit of damage. So 38 to 36. So let's see what our crit is if we ever get that. Doesn't really matter, though. It doesn't matter because there's no, there's no enemy that can take 36, right? Not in heroic, at least. Yeah, it's not going to crit forever. Yeah, anyways, it's all the same. So damage rise, I mean, you basically might as well just stick, get put on the extra skill tier, right? Four skill tiers at six with canisters. We're good. It was working. They were all were all the builds that we ran we, we ran were working. Now, if we're running the skill tier, reduce extra skill tier. We do have the 
you know the flexibility to put back on sharpshooter just for the sake of having better handling you know um less misses right that's gonna keep you alive in those crunch time scenarios those those times we're like oh man i put up three shots and i missed all three of them because that does happen sometimes but the right foam is supposed to be fixing that technically so you know so i could just leave that up to the user and say look if you if you're not great at landing shots just gonna put on the sharpshooter and you, you're still gonna have enough right foam to to do the dirty deed You know, obviously that's at the cost of one right foam, but the, the skill efficiency picks up the pace. It's a lot. The skill efficiency is most important. What up, Lawrence? So I think that's probably the smarter build in. I think that's this is the smarter build to go with the extra skill tier. Because again, the right foam is holding them steady. And so having the extra right foam is going to make up for any potential misses that you might have, whether you have right, whether you have sharpshooter or not. Right. Even if you have sharpshooter, you can still miss. So the riot foam is the savior at the end of the day, making sure you don't run out. So this is hitting at 36 million non crit at full at uh, when this is full stack. But remember, that's without the mementos. So it'll probably push 40 when you're when you're uh, when you got all your mementos. So, whoa, I think we're good, right? I mean, if the pain is going to be there's still going to be the pain and it's just like and that's whether you're going to uh, like it or not so there's one pain is kicking off the fight is going to take multiple shots to get that first enemy but again play from cover beef it up and then start running and gunning otherwise the bosses nine out of ten times will take two shots every now and again you'll get that heavy gunner boss he's going to take more than two but uh most bosses are going to take two nemesis shots and so you are sacrificing one shot boss capabilities by buying all this all this technically hybridization for defense right and so it's but for me it's a worthy sacrifice it goes to that whole saying are you going to build your build for the two bosses or are you going to build your build for the other 48 enemies you have to encounter just to get to those bosses right and for me i think it's a smarter move to build for the other 48 enemies because they're the ones that usually kill you and if you can eliminate all of them you just have the boss standing alone and he then makes them pretty easy you know um you know the boss isn't usually my biggest threat right it's getting swarmed is your is your biggest threat with these but we handle that really well because we can one shot one kill so anyways so the bosses you know a couple of bullets and they've never really been a problem and if and i'm paying really aggressive out of cover most people are probably gonna pace themselves a little bit more and I, it's just that I'm really accustomed to this weapon, the 1886, and the cadence of it, you know. Ooh, the original Dead Eye. I don't know that one, man. Tell me more. What did it. What, was it a gear set? I left Division uh, 1. Um, earlier than most. Ooh, that's a good hunting right there. Count Ranger. I left earlier than most because um, I got bored of it. It was a great game. I had I played it for a while and then I got bored, but I left before all like. I don't even remember gear sets in the game. I mean, th maybe they were there, maybe they weren't. I don't even remember them. That's how long ago it was I played Division. Uh, but Underground didn't exist. There was no Underground when I left. So. DPS is damage per second and no sustain. You will not sustain output either peak or not. Yeah. They nerfed it three times. It was so strong. Fuck. That's like striker, huh? <laughs> Fuck. You just keep destroying that thing. They don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool guys, I better bounce. It's getting late. I appreciate you hanging with me though. 
hopefully it didn't get too boring in the end as i was getting into the fine details of this but it's so close i'm still gonna run it like another day and just kind of what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go back and forth between the same two stats you know what i mean it's all about the skill tier techni technician and sharpshooter and so i'm gonna be rotating those same things probably tomorrow just to fine tune it's just one of those builds that's so cool fun you know it's got everything that you want in a and build double status effects is really cool right and so i um i want to get it right and then i'll ultimately publish my things but you guys either way you should just tweak it to how you love it so right on you got the regulars that makes me so happy when i hear somebody else got the regulars it does it does it really does because I want to make more regulus builds and I don't just because I've, I feel so bad that people don't have the regulus. Oh, you say you're on the way. You're on the way of getting it. Sorry, sorry. But either way, I can't wait till you get it because I, you know, I want more and more people to get there. I wish they unlocked it so everybody could get the regulus or I wish you could get it gifted to you or some shit like that. But because yeah, I mean, you're not alone. There's so many people that just don't have it. Just don't have it. And that, and it's, it's such a really good gun. But, you know, not that many people raid. Not that many people raid. It seems like it does, right? Because you see these, you know, streams of raids, right? But it's just, it's a very, very small community of raiders. Very small. Good job, though. Still looking for the bighorn, huh, Deja? It'll come. I, you I think you probably have more better luck getting the bighorn, in my opinion. Right on, Lawrence. I think you're better. You're better. Have better luck getting the bighorn in the summit than you do in the strongholds. It's funny because I play. I play legendary all the time. Usually, usually daily. <laughs> you know what I mean? Usually daily. I haven't all week. I haven't uh, because of the um, reanimated event. So the reanimated event kept me out of legendaries. But um, and then now I'm working on this on this headshot thing. But I can tell you, man, like for all the legendaries, what I haven't gotten a big horn in a very long time, man, a very long time. Just don't get them. Countdown's dropping big horns. I don't think it did that, did it? Does it? Yeah, I've gone you you definitely boss floors. Yeah, so you know level 10 is a good idea, but you know it's I just I think it's just cuz you know leg, legendary strongholds take so long to complete and you're not going to know if you're going to get it until the very end of that thing and you're like I didn't get it. Okay, let's start over, you know. And like, even if you're with a pretty efficient team, not speed running, it's 45 minutes, right? Maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, somewhere in that realm. So 45 minutes to an hour, you're like, didn't get it, starting over. So the same mission, you know? And so it's, yeah, it's painful. Like I haven't gotten one in so long and I haven't gotten plenty. I mean, I probably in my lifetime in this game, I've probably gotten, I don't know eight or so which is actually not a lot considering i play legendary and the daily so you know what i mean um but i remember getting my first one like i got my first one like in my fifth legendary ever my fifth clear basically and um that's when it was like legendaries just dropped everybody was like yeah trying to you know nobody was really masters at it yet it was kind of it took like three hours to finish a legendary back then that's how hard they were and uh i got one uh big horn and i was like oh right i got it oh, oh we were so excited this crew i was like you guys want to play again they were like yeah let's do it we all played again it was on capitol building and i got another big horn like back to back and these were they were a hot commodity right like nobody even really knew about how to how i handled there was no feedback on the gun yet you know it was just the one to get and then eventually reviews started coming out going god back then the, the bighorn was really bad back then it was like it had a horrible the handling was worse 
and Pete, the biggest complaint was uh, complaint was it wasn't strong enough to even use in legendary. There's a legendary gun that's not even strong enough to use in legendary, and that's still that way, right? I mean, you can, of course, you can, but it's definitely not one of the better legendary weapons at all, right? But cool, brother banditos. I appreciate kicking it with me. It's a badass. That's fun. Uh, I didn't want to just look at my. I just says I got to write this stuff down, but I'm gonna bounce here in a second. I just want to look at my headshot kills. I have to write it down because I lose track of where we end up. So one oh nine zero six one. So how many did I end up being? Uh, almost a thousand. So one zero nine. 061 minus 108 194 so 867 headshot kills today that's cool that was a big leap and so yeah we started off at we were 94 when we started today and we pushed to 88 which is cool and then a couple of big leaps here so a lot of these are close together see that so once we take 87 we'll take 86 and then probably 85. So th these are dropping. Then there's another big leap to 84 right there. So, and then we got Freedom Brigade. We can catch up to Freedom. He's a killer. All right, guys, have a good night. I'll catch you later. Peace. Zito out.